This is not public. Good morning. I'm Jeff Cook. I'm the chairman of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. I'd like to welcome everybody to our day two of the February meeting. This is our full commission day, so we'll be discussing and voting as a full commission today. So uh, to get started off properly, I'd like to call on the Reverend James Stroud, who's our <laughs> commissioner chaplain, to do the uh, invocation of the pledge. Thank you, Commissioner Stroud. Uh, so uh, as usual, uh, if anyone would like to speak today from the public, please step to the microphone, state your name, where you're from, and if you represent any organization. And we ask everyone to limit any discussion to approximately three minutes so other folks can have an opportunity to speak. And if we can remember, I need to do the same. Need to s please silence your cell phones. Commissioner Box, I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, you're ahead of me. <laughs> and, and please bear with me we have a lot of guests and and so welcome everyone glad you're all here uh, from Tennessee Bass Nation we have David Lowry Jake Davis Gary Lane and uh, then from the Tennessee Fur Harvester Association uh, Mr. and Miss Clarence and Laura Dyes thank y'all for being here again great to see you uh, John Daniel and James Lord uh, from the Lebanon Democrat, Mr. M Mr. Woody, Larry Woody, uh, Jackson Holbert, son of Commissioner and soon to be Chairman Holbert, uh, Dr. David Yuskovich, who's with Tennessee Bass Nation, uh, Christy Peterson, who is Alan Peterson's daughter, as well as his wife, Mary Jo Peterson. Uh, Christy's with the Tennessee Parks and Greenway Association. Uh, ben West and Michelle Sides from uh, UT and Lone Oaks. Jim Granberry, who's a new commissioner coming on next month, welcome. And Trey Teague, a former commissioner, is here with us today. And my wife, Julie, and son, Mitch, are here. So welcome to everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. Vicki Swan is here as well. Did I miss any other family? So I'd like to say we had a great time last night, too. Had a great celebration and banquet for those of us that are leaving. Really appreciate everything that the agency did around that as well. We're going to say a lot of thank yous today. So, so that's to get started with that one. It was very special last night. So a lot of family together time and really appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, Danette, if we could call the roll. Angie Box. Bill Cox, Here. Dennis Gardner, Here. Connie King, Here. Tony Sanders, Here. James Stroud, Here. Bill Swan, For the last time. Here. <laughs> Kent Woods, Here. Jamie Woodson, Here. Brian McLaren, Here. Kurt Holbert, Here. Jeff Cook. Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Jeanette. So we received the minutes beforehand, and unless anyone wants to read those, do I have a motion for approval? Uh, uh, approval or motion for approval from, from Commissioner Swan. A second. Uh, Commissioner Woodson. All in favor? Approval of the minutes. Let me know by saying aye. aye. No opposed. So it passes. Any announcements from the commission? Commissioner Woodson. I don't have an announcement, but I did want to thank. Mr. Clarence dies and Miss Laura dies for this beautiful 
box call. I know that the members who are leaving receive these, and it's really incredible. Um, Mr. Dyes is a really talented sportsman and artist, and this is made of walnut, cherry, and poplar. And I'm very proud to say it's one of two that I own that he created um, in our neck of the woods, and I'm really proud of it, and I'm so thankful for your leadership at the Fur Harvesters Association and all y'all do. Thank you. And I say thank you as well. What she said much more eloquently than I could. So, so what she said. Thank you, <coughs> Commissioner Swan. Um, I want to say thank you for that great turkey call too. And if Bill Cox starts bloviating today, I'm going to start striking the call so he'll get the message. Now, it's more of when, isn't it? Right, so, <laughs> look. <laughs> Do you even know what bloviating means? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't, but I've heard the word, and I, it's always been associated with your name. Yeah. <laughs> Director Carter, any, any comments? You know, Commissioner Holbert, you, you hit your button. I didn't know if you had. Okay. Uh, well, with that, I'd like to recognize Mark Ridings for a presentation. Good morning, Chairman Cook, Commissioners. Uh, I'm here today to present the 2018 TWRA Internet Professional of the Year Award. Uh, each year, the IT division uh, selects the awardee from the four quarterly award winners throughout the year that have distinguished themselves in their uh, either both personally and professionally in their uh, work with, with the agency. You'll find that each of our quarterly award winners has excelled in both their personal customer service as well as their IT proficiencies. And this year's award recipient is no different. This year's recipient has distinguished themselves by providing exceptional service as a production control specialist lead for the Information Technology Division of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Our recipient has over 20 years of state service beginning in August of 1998. During their time with the TWRA, they have supervised both the help desk support and network operations sections in the IT division. When someone was needed to supervise IT print operations, they rose to the challenge and have excelled in this new position. Not only have they implemented service level agreements in the IT printing that consistently maintain 100% on-time delivery of services, they have also facilitated the implementation of a new decal ordering and inventory process that has allowed us to reduce the number of number of decal orders as well as the space needed for storage. In addition, they have also taken on the responsibility of supervising our data entry section. Moreover, they have accomplished all of this and the aforementioned responsibilities with a true sense of professionalism and attention to detail while providing the highest level of generally courteous and heartfelt customer service. Their distinctive accomplishments reflect great credit upon themselves, our information technology division, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and the state of Tennessee. It is both my honor and my privilege to present the 2018 TWRA IT Professional of the Year Award to Shakri Hussain. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. This is really, I'm so honored to be here today. This is, I'm grateful really for this award. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I want to thank everyone with Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, all divisions. Uh, I want to thank my staff, uh, data entry, IT print operations, IT technical operations. I want to thank uh, my immediate manager, Scott Denton, who has always supported me. I will also would like to thank Perita Johnson who, uh, for her support and her uh, help. And I thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm very proud of this. I'm, I'm very grateful to work for this agency. And I will continue working hard. Thank you. This is George Wade. step up.
Director Carter. Thank you, Chairman Cook. I'd just like to say about the IT professional, I've always been there to answer the technical questions for them. And, and, and that's, <laughs> that's a, thank, thank you for, for recognizing that Shakri does a great job. Well, we're doing too many of these retirement things lately, but anyway, we have another one I want to bring to you today. And about 34 years ago, an imposter from Missouri crossed the river and found a job with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency as an officer in, in Chester County. And after working there for a while, he moved into the, to the, uh, inf to the Information Education Division and handled all of Region 1 in terms of, the, of communications, i &E coordination, all those kind of things. Then in from there into the deer biologist and handled a deer program for Region 1, then into our assistant regional manager position for Region 1, and then into the regional manager position. And in each one of those, he's excelled in everything he's done. And I'm talking about Alan Peterson. And a lot of you all know Alan, of course, but just real quickly, you can see some of the pictures on the screen of Alan. He's the opposite of a photo bomber. It's, it's really hard to catch Alan in any picture. He shies away from the spotlight and from the limelight any time he can. So it's been difficult to make sure that, that we had some pictures of him to even show you. <clears throat> And some of them, of course, he looks like he lived in the mountains for a while. <laughs> but, but in any case, Alan has just been an, an enormous asset to this agency. And I'm sure when he started in Chester County, he didn't realize he would become one of the leaders and one of the mentors and, and one of the people that we relied on throughout the agency, not only in his region, but, but statewide. <clears throat> Alan changed the job when we reorganized and went through a different structure. Alan moved from the regional manager position into the to administrative position in Region 1 and has done an outstanding job of making that happen. When we first talked about that, Alan said, whatever it takes to make all this work, and he certainly lived up to that role. And he's been a, a mentor for a lot of us in a lot of different ways. But now he's been working on a cabin back over in, in Missouri, and I think that's where he and Mary Jo, his wife, will probably spend a lot of their time. And, We've got to see his daughter Christy, wherever she's still here, Christy grow up and, and take on a similar role in the Parks and Greenways Foundation. So it's certainly been a family affair, and as Alan and all the people who work for the agency will tell you that when you're in the wildlife agency, it is a family affair. <clears throat> so I wanted to give Alan a chance. I'm surprised he even showed up, honestly. <clears throat> this is... In the 34 years, this is the second time I've ever seen him in a coat and tie. <laughs> Actually, it may have been a few more than that, but but it, I didn't know if we would be able to talk him into coming. Because like I said, he kind of shies away from the spotlight. He wants to push that to everybody else and, and kind of push them toward doing better things. But he's certainly been a person that has led in every position that he's been in. Alan, if you don't mind joining me up here, I'll give you a chance to say a, a word or two if you like. And But... but as you're coming up, it just simply says, to Alan Peters, from 34 years of faithful and dedicated service from your friends at Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and I'll show you this plaque. We have a tradition for, for folks who start as in an officer position and, and move to others. Each time their badge changes, we try to get that badge back from them over the years and put that on their plaque as a constant reminder of what they did and what they meant to the agency. So, Alan, on behalf of the, me and I, and I think Chairman Cook and the rest of the commission, Thank you for an outstanding career, for all the contributions you've made to this agency. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know that I really want to say a whole lot. Uh, I know it's, it's time for old farts like me to hand, hand the keys to the young kids and I hope they don't wrap the Chevy around a phone pole. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it's, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I got paid to do stuff that a lot of us, would get, other people would get arrested for doing, shooting deer at night and whatever. Uh, it's, uh, I couldn't ask for, for a, a better way to spend a career. Uh, and, and I appreciate everything this agency's done for me and, and my family and I, and I, a lot of people don't realize the sacrifices that people in the wildlife division, the, the families have to go through, the, all the weekends that 
I had to work and they had to, the, the, you don't get to play with your kids and take them on trips and stuff on, on weekends like normal people do. And, and they sacrificed, my family, both daughters and my wife have sacrificed a lot and uh, I appreciate all they've, they've done to, to let me get through this career. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. You want me to keep going, Mr. Chairman? Okay. You know, it, it's a real pleasure to, for the agency to, to recognize people inside the agency and, and commissioners as well. It's also a great honor when we have the opportunity to recognize those people who have gone above and beyond in their particular areas of, that is important to them and what it's meant to the resource and to the people they're involved with. Recently, Commissioner Cox had, had uh, asked to recognize a couple of people in his area, uh, Robert Cliff and Tommy Rainey. And with that, rather than me making any further remarks, I'd, with you, I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Cox for his comments. Thank you, Director. I, there are two gentlemen that live in Bolivar, Hardeman County. Uh, Tommy actually lives in McNary County now. That uh, Mr. Robert Cliff was a 90-odd-year-old uh, gentleman that lives in Bolivar and uh, makes turkey calls. And... Uh, Anybody that from this West Tennessee knows Mr. Clift and probably has uh, too many of his calls. And uh, he is he's the type of guy, and I've, I've, I had resolutions, and I read both of them at, their, at the NWTF dinner the other night, so I'm not going to spend time reading them. But, but he is a fine gentleman, type of guy that uh, you feel better when you walk away than you did when you walked up to him. And uh, I've got a... I've got a little poem here that I'm going to wait and read toward the end of the of the meeting that he recites, but uh, uh, from memory, most of the time when you when you're around him. And Tommy Rainey uh, is a uh, is a friend of mine for years that uh, lives in McNair County. He's been active in NWTF, and they're both in the Tennessee Hall of Fame. And he's served on the committee that. Uh, makes decisions about where the money goes and several million dollars to help TWRA do this and that, uh, matching funds and uh, improvements of habitat, that kind of thing. And I recognize both of them at the Hardeman County um, NWTF dinner the other night. And they're both fine gentlemen and, uh, and they, both, uh, they both appreciate it. So that's all, Mr. Thank you, Commissioner. And also congratulations to those two people I didn't, wasn't able to make that meeting where it was their presentation, but thank you for honoring them on behalf of the agency. The next resolution and recognition we'd like to move on to is, is to Jake Davis. And Mr. Chairman, I think it'd be best if I just turn the reins over to you there. So... You know, there's folks like Mr. Cliff and Mr. Rainey that, that, that Ed was just speaking of who, who serve our community so well. There's a, another person, Jake Davis. And the, these are the guys who just, things just seem to happen. It just magically happens, but it's not magic. It's those guys who, who make it happen. So, like, you, you show up to a late cleanup day, and there's all the supplies. Everything's ready to go. You go out, and you pick up literally thousands of pounds of trash from around the lakes or wherever the, the, the cleanup has been planned. Or you have a work day where you're going to make lake habitat uh, structures. You show up, there's pallets full of concrete blocks, there's all the PVC pipe and bamboo and everything that's needed, a cement truck, 
a few hours later, the volunteers are all there. A few hours later, you have hundreds of structures for habitat. There's another day that magically all that stuff shows up at the lake and, and, and it's put in with all the volunteers being there. So, you know, this stuff doesn't obviously magically happen. It's folks like this that, you know, it's incumbent on us to recognize these folks and to say thank you for all you do. So that's the, I'd like to read this. Um, Whereas Mr. Jake Davis served his country with distinction for 21 years of service in the United States Air Force, holding the rank of Master Sergeant, and whereas Mr. Davis served in various capacities during his career, and at the time of his retirement was Officer Ascensions, Flight Chief, Nashville, Tennessee, and whereas Mr. Davis earned numerous awards and dec decorations during his career, including the Air Force Meritorious Service Medal, Air Force Commendation Medal, three Oak Leaf Clusters, Air Force Achievement Medal of Her Heroism and Outstanding Unit Award, whereas his passion for the outdoors began as a young man, growing up trout fishing and hunting, and continued throughout the nation and around the world during his service to our country, and whereas since his retirement from his service, Mr. Davis has taken a special interest in helping to protect and promote the natural resources of the great state of Tennessee, and whereas Mr. Davis has volunteered with Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Lake Managers, Fisheries Division, crews in southern middle Tennessee working to restore habitat in our reservoirs and streams, whereas Mr. Davis also volunteers as the Tennessee Bass Nation Conservation Director and Assistant State Director for High School Youth Bass and Fishing, whereas through his efforts has helped Tennessee become the state with the most participants in high school bass fishing, and whereas working with TWRA Fisheries Managers was able to secure the 2018 American Fishing Tackle Company Conservation Grant for $5,000 awarded to the TBN to complete more than 2,000 reservoir habitat and fish attractor enhancements on Thames Ford Reservoir, and whereas Mr. Davis plays an active role in continuous cleanup efforts on regional reservoirs dedicated toward the improvement for fishing and other recreational opportunities, and whereas Mr. Davis leads his lends his experience and expertise as a licensed United States Coast Guard Captain, and now therefore the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission and the Wildlife Resources Agency do jointly proclaim sincere appreciation for the working relationship of the service of Mr. Jake Davis to promote and provide recreational opportunities for future generations. I couldn't be a lawyer. This is to me where is. <laughs> in testimony wherefore, the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting in regular session in, in Nashville, Tennessee, Friday, February 22nd, 2019, have caused me to be affixed have caused to be affixed the Great Seal of Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. So I'd like to call up Commissioners uh, Box and, and uh, uh, Olbert, to, if y'all like to come say something to y'all. They're, they're, they, they're a big Jake fan also, and they're gonna, they've been working with Jake on some projects and there's some ongoing things as well. So if, I'd like for y'all to come up for the presentation if you'd like to say something as well. Hello all. Uh, I don't know if I can say enough about Jake uh, here this morning, Mr. Davis, but uh, he is uh, amazing. And all the work, it's just unbelievable. The volunteer time he's put in with these kids. I actually got to speak with a high school student on the fishing team. And uh, the safety is first with him for these kids. And uh, he has grown these, these, these teams just astronomically. Like I said, it's Tennessee's number one. Uh, Tennessee fishing team is the number one in the nation. We've got the largest amount of kids here. And he... Uh, has volunteered so much, and um, I think and the child I spoke with on the team said, you know, we asked him questions, and he might have heard a million times, but still excited and uh, ready to answer and just guide and lead them, and I could stand up here all day, but I really appreciate everything he's done. Thank you. I don't like going last because it feels like I'm repeating everything everybody else says. So anyway, uh, but you can't say enough about Jake and um, – what he has done, I know it's a team effort. I know he has to have some help. But uh, what he started is, is spilling over to this whole state. Um, and that's that's what's great about it. You started something small, and it's become this, it's going to become this massive effort statewide um, and make Tennessee even a better destination than it already is for fishing. Um, what you've done to habitat for habitat is something that the agency couldn't have done with a lot more manpower that we can have. Um, you've made it possible. Uh, thank you for what you've done habitat wise. Thank you more for what you've done in all these children's lives across the state. Um, 
these children that are in there will never forget you, never forget David, um, what you guys are doing. Um, I'm honored to have been at some tournaments, see how you guys operate. Um, safety is always first, always preached from the beginning to the end. And I know these kids get tired of it, but we've all had friends that thought they knew everything about the boating in it or the boat fishing and boating. And we saw them on the news. We lost them. So anyway, thank you guys for all you've done. Um, I, I don't know how we can ever replace you. So don't plan on retiring anytime soon. <laughs> don't plan on retiring from retirement. Yeah, right, let me say it that way. So thank you again for all you do. Mr. Chairman, I had one quick comment about these gentlemen. You know, we talk about retention and recruitment and reactivation in R3, and as good as the agency is and work they do, the agency can't do what volunteers can do in the multiple of those of what those people do. And and gentlemen like this that that help children and mentor them and and volunteer to do the the heavy lifting uh, is 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 the only thing, in my opinion, that's, that, that works. Mentoring, hunting and fishing and that kind of thing is, is, uh, is, is what we need more people doing, and we really appreciate uh, what you gentlemen are doing. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Any other comments? I asked Jake just to give us a quick uh, uh, brief rundown. on uh, We appropriated some funds uh, a few months ago, and just to see what's, what you've multiply that into, you know, multiples from there. So just, just if you've come, give us a little presentation, please. Thank you. Oh, boy. First of all, thank you, commissioners, all of you, and I appreciate all the work you're doing here. Um, I want to recognize two guys out here. Our state president uh, from Tennessee Bass Nation, Dave Yuskovich, and Dave Lowry. Dave was the actual one that really started it all about five years ago with this high school fishing thing, six years ago now. And then he sort of latched onto me and drug me in. Didn't fight too much, but we're, we're here where we're at today. Um, the other guy that helps out a lot, this elderly gentleman over here, probably our oldest boat captain who volunteers, went out and bought a boat just to take kids fishing, uh, Gary Lahr. So he's, he's sort of attached to my side. So. Anyhow, we'll make this short and sweet this morning because uh, I know you all have a big agenda and Commissioner Cook uh, blessed us with slipping me in <laughs> doing this. Um, I'm Captain Jake Davis with Tennessee Bass Nation. And as most of you know, we had a grant for $5,000 from AFCO and with the behest of uh, several indiv individuals, uh, Todd St. John's and Jess uh, Taylor down on Normandy, we had expanded that program to sh build a state example to go across the entire state, and it has worked. Well, the, the model was to get volunteer manpower uh, because of the TWRA Manning to, to jumpstart the reservoir habitat rebuild and help with Tim's Ford and Woods Reservoir. Little did we know we have expanded that in the last six months to not just Woods and Thames, but Normandy, Percy Priest, Old Hickory, uh, Williamsport. I believe we did some work over in your area, Commissioner Cox, uh, on some of the management lakes there. Um, I know Region 1, we're putting a team together to work on Kentucky Lake and, and the rest of the management areas over there. Um, in, West, or in East Tennessee, we've had crews out picking up a lot of trash. It, it just exploded on us, almost to the point to where I couldn't keep track of the numbers. Um, as we go through this. 
the work one Jake the workforce is right here um, we have a unique ability to go out and get volunteer help from industry folks such as Smyrna ready mix um, when we did the habit the original habitat build we had 110 anglers and boat captains down there um, all the TWRA folks that we could garner up I think we had six or seven uh, the biologists to help you know talk to the kids and get in there and work with them and show them how to put stuff together but SRM rolled up 11 yards of concrete in this truck from the time it hit the lot it was three hours later it was empty and we had almost a thousand fish attractors built the other picture on the right hand side there is from Percy Priest where the folks up here at, at the Percy Priest management area we went in there and in about two and a half hours thanks to the adult side of the uh, TBN in the high school and junior side from Mount Juliet we put together about 410 fish attractors in two and a half hours so this is something that we can do with workforce that would take the TWRA six months okay when we get to the deployment if you recognize some of the folks in these pictures uh, you know don't 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 pick on them too bad but we've even had commissioners out there deploying stuff total count we're just over 3,000 pieces of habitat without counting the spider blocks and everything that we did with the TWRA just what Bass Nation is what you're looking at there uh, has done with the kids in the help of our lake managers additionally we've had some lake cleanup days uh, around the state this is uh, Normandy and uh, a little bit of Tim's Ford mainly Normandy we got out there and found we had a mess one day and we made it, we called a community action day and we picked up just uh, Commissioner Cook year out there we picked up almost 6,000 pounds of garbage we had the dumpster overflowing and I can tell you folks we didn't make a scratch on that lake we did not scratch it and we're going back again uh, the bass teams have teamed up and they're gonna they're gonna go back in there again and we'll be there to help them and like I said additionally this is spread across the state to Center Hill uh, Kentucky Lake Chickamauga Dale Halla you name it we've been there we've got teams you know over in Knoxville working on Loudoun uh, trying to make that look better and look look a little better for when the, the uh, classic comes in March um, are we gonna get it all no but we're gonna make a valiant effort if I can get this to roll one this one here I just put in here to emphasize it's affecting everybody from the little guy in the center all the way up to a gentleman by the name of Charlie Waller if you've ever heard of him he was the original boat builder for bumblebee boats he was at the project helping uh, on the first one Charlie's I think he's gonna kill me for saying this I believe he's 88 years old and he manned that concrete truck with a shovel the entire time um, we've learned a lot uh, thanks to Lyle and Jess and Todd and all the TWRA guys the managers they've spent times with the kids uh, in that top section there showing them what you all do what the TWRA does what you know where we're headed and getting them motivated changing attitudes out there a lot and we've even had an opportunity to change or teach some of the managers that bottom picture if anybody has ever fished in your life you know bananas do not belong on boats <laughs> told you I was gonna get you <laughs> Todd brought bananas on a boat so yeah we, we had a great day if there's uh, any questions I'll try and answer them now but I want to once again thank you for the resolution in for everything y'all are doing uh, for the commissioners who are departing if there's anything I can ever do for you you know how to get a hold of me the new commissioners that are in the crowd you'll be seeing me because Commissioner Holbert and Commissioner Box have already wrangled me into the next project so thank you very much
Thank you again to Mr. Cliff, Mr. Rainey, Jake, and Gary, glad you're here. Didn't, didn't see you here earlier. So with that, we'll move into the Wildlife Management Committee. Commissioner Holbert, Chairman Holbert. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just got a text that somebody's watching us live, so I, I got a feeling David Lowry's live streaming over there. So. <laughs> That's good. I, we like it. So anyway, um, we like to call on Jamie Federson. He's here somewhere. There he is. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, this morning I will be discussing with you the agency recommendations for migratory game bird hunting seasons and regulations, which will be Proclamation 1901. Uh, a lot of this is going to be a recap from, I think most of you have seen this yesterday from the, the, the Wildlife Committee meeting, but I'll just remind the Commission that we did Many of the changes that we have for these um, these hunting seasons for migratory game birds came through public input. We have um, a, a period in October and November where we actively solicit comments. We collect comments throughout the year, and we also um, put out a, a public opinion poll in uh, late December um, asking specific, specific questions about uh, woodcock, crow, and uh, duck hunting seasons. So you'll see uh, we recommended some changes for woodcock and crow, uh, also for the duck season, and then uh, geese and cranes and hunting with raptor seasons are really um, housekeeping um, to accommodate the changes we have for the duck seasons. There were no there were no changes in the federal frameworks, and I'll just remind the commission that the um, Migratory game birds are uh, under the oversight of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and they, um, they, they put frameworks, constraints around when we can and cannot have seasons, how, what our bag limits are. And so um, for this suite of species that you see listed, there were no framework changes, um, and all we're introducing this year's calendar date changes in response to hunter input. So currently our woodcock season is set where we would open on Saturday, the second Saturday in November and we would close on the fourth Monday in December. And through uh, a lot of public input that we got, we're recommending a uh, change to that and we would like to offer a split season to our hunters. Um, we have a, in East Tennessee, we have a fair amount of woodcock that move through in January and, and we'd like to accommodate those hunters. Um, e uh, West Tennessee, we get uh, a lot of woodcock that move through in November and December. So we've, we're only allowed 45 days on this particular bird. Um, so uh, allowing or having a split season, uh, we hope to accommodate uh, more hunters across the state. And you'll see that we're offering phase one to open up on the second Saturday in November and run for 23 consecutive days. And then uh, phase two would be just uh, January 10th through January 31st, which is the latest that we can run this season. We also had a fair amount of input that um, crow hunters wanted uh, more days throughout the week in cooler months. And so uh, we had come to, uh, we had a, uh, our preview last month. We had three phases um, where we were going to offer up um, uh, several days during uh, colder months, and we were going to have, uh, you know, phase one would be three days a week, phase two would be seven days a week, and phase three would be three days a week. Crow hunters came back to us and said, that's way too complicated, we don't want that. We'll make it a little bit more simple, and this is what we came up with, um, offering uh, a split season with two phases where we have uh, more days during the week in cooler months in October through January, or into January. This is what the actual dates would be for the seasons this year for these particular uh, birds. The next group, this is, uh, includes our early duck season, uh, the rails and, and gallinules. No, no real changes to what we've been offering uh, as far as timing of these, of, the, of these particular birds. And then the dove season, uh, no change here. This is when the dates would normally fall for dove season. 
Waterfowl, coot, um, there were some changes in federal frameworks and uh, we are making some adjustments uh, in, in, in response to those changes. Uh, currently, the framework states that we cannot have a hunting season uh, any later than the last Sunday in January. That would be the last day that we could hunt. Um, also, you'll see in this picture that there are two beautiful pintails flying. Uh, there was a change in that, uh, and you'll see that coming up. So just to show you what this year would look like if we did not change the season to accommodate the change in framework. We would end on the last Sunday in January, which would be the 26th. We'd count back 58 days, which would start us on uh, Saturday, November 30th, have our typical two days. So um, this is what it would be, but this is not what we're offering. Because of the change in the federal framework, we're anticipating that it's gonna be uh, no later than January 31st is when we can have the last day of the season. And uh, a lot of response from hunters is that, yes, we, they would like to have the season end as late as possible, ending on January 31st. And you'll also note that the pintail has changed from two birds to one bird. Um, that is also a change in the framework that we need to accommodate. Um, yeah, okay, all right, it is there. Um, so... At, with discussion with the uh, Wildlife Committee yesterday, what we're uh, proposing is having the real foot hunting season, their first phase, open up on the 9th uh, and 10th. That would be their phase one, and then having their phase two begin on Thursday, December 5th. It's pretty light on the screen, but hopefully you can see that it, it is it is colored as the beginning of their phase two, and then their phase two, real foot, would last through December, or I'm sorry, January 31st. The remainder of the state, uh, we would open up phase one on the day after Thanksgiving, Friday the 29th, and run it for four days, uh, closing on Monday the 2nd, and then phase two for the remainder of the state would begin on the 7th of December and run through January 31st. And uh, much of this was put together based on um, input that we received from our public opinion poll that we put out, folks, like I said before, uh, really are interested in running the season as late as possible. Um, and so th this is what we're proposing. Uh, and the changes are, b are based on the discussion we had at the Wildlife Committee meeting yesterday. And so this is what the actual days would be. You saw it on the calendar. To, um, a little bit um, cleaner here, but also, again, want to note that we need to decrease the daily pintail bag limit from two birds per day to one bird per day. And since, oh, okay, and then waterfowl, uh, the youth waterfowl season, again, would be the, the first two Saturdays following the close of the regular duck season. Since our goose seasons pretty much mirror our... Uh, our, um, well, now that I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm going to offer up something different. <laughs> and I'm going to apologize to Danette right now because what, I, what we didn't talk about, if we're mirroring all of our seasons, then the northwest goose zone, that should look just like what the real foot zone looks like for geese. So I'm going to apologize right now. It didn't just hit me until just now as I looked at that that I may need to make a little change in the proclamation. That the Northwest Goose Zone, to mirror the real foot duck zone, those dates would say November 9th, closing November 10th, and then phase two would open December 5th and run through February 14th. And then that would be the same for the other geese as well. You'll see phase three for the Northwest Goose Zone would should say November 9th and November 10th, and then phase four would open up on December 5th. That doesn't affect any changes. That doesn't affect anything with the light goose conservation season because um, the, that's statewide and um, is not zone specific. And I'll remind you that uh, this is the season um, where hunters can use unplugged guns, electronic calls. This is really um, 
a, a season that uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service has out there for us to reduce the, the snow goose population, um, which is having some impacts on their breeding grounds in the Arctic. So just an additional opportunity for, for Tennessee hunters. Uh, the changes in the duck zones uh, necessitate changes in the dates for the, the Sandhill Crane zone or the Sandhill Crane hunting season uh, because, again, those uh, mimic the uh, phase two of the duck season. And then, of course, the changes that we're recommending for the crow season and the duck seasons impact our uh, raptor hunting for migratory game birds. This is, again, simply housekeeping. So this is what the changes would be for that with the crow season and then also for the duck season. So just to wrap it all up, um, we're recommending a split in the woodcock season. Uh, more days in the cooler months for the crow season, and then uh, with the anticipated framework changes to the duck season, ending the seasons on, dis on January 31st and a decrease in the pintail bag limit from two birds per day to one, and with other housekeeping changes for geese, cranes, and hunting with raptors. So at this point, uh, I would, um, uh, for your consideration, Proclamation 1901, I'd... Um, would the agency recommends that you would approve 1901 uh, as I will correct it momentarily to accommodate what I just discussed with the changes in the goose seasons in the northwest zone. Okay. And I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Um, okay. First off, uh, we met yesterday. Um, we unanimously, the Wildlife Committee met, and we unanimously approved this. Um, I'm going to come at you as recommending it with an amendment. I'm going to recommend that we pass Proclamation 1901 with the corrected dates on the goose season. So do, do we need to amend that in committee, or can I just amend it as the, on the commission? It's full commission. Okay, I take that as a form, form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Woodson. So, do you now have an amendment, yep. Chairman Holbert? No, you do. I do. I have an amendment to. Would you state state? Do you have the exact dates to? Could you state for us what the? What yeah. You, yes, sir. Um, I'm going to go back to the to those slides, just to make sure that we get it right. Yes. Yeah, so the amendment would be. Um, Changing uh, so the the for the white-fronted goose season in the northwest goose zone that phase one would open November 9th and close on November 10th with phase two opening December 5th and closing on February 14th and that for the light geese uh, Canada ge Canada goose and Brant seasons in the northwest goose zone that phase three would open November 9th close November 10th, and that phase four would open December 5th and close on February 14th. Okay. Do I have a motion for approval of the amendment? Second. Commissioner Stroud, do I have a second? Okay, so any discussion on the amendment? We're, we're good. We're good. Okay. Any, any discussion on the amendment? Any discussion from the public on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment as stated, uh, let it know by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. So the amendment passes. Now we're back to the, the recommendation. Uh, it has, we have a motion of seconds. We're good. Yeah, you're good. Good. So um, any discussion from the commission? A question. Jamie, if the if Fish and Wildlife has not made it official that we're going to January 31st, I mean, how sure are you? Because if they don't, then then this is all wrong. Well, uh, I would say that I am 
95, I would even push 98% certain that this is going to be okay. We have been in uh, constant communication with the Fish and Wildlife Service about um, the anticipated framework changes. Uh, I have seen a draft copy of the Federal Register that should go out sometime in, it's not going to go out until March, uh, but there is strong feeling from the Fish and Wildlife Service that uh, there will not be any changes to it. So we're, we're all feeling pretty confident that what I've proposed is going to happen and, and these anticipated changes are, are, are going to happen. Yep. Any other discussion from the commission? Any discussion from the public? Hearing none, all in favor of Proclamation 1901 Migratory Game Bird Hunting Season 2019-2020 as amended, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? The amendment passes. And Jamie, again, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for all the waterfowl. Uh, you thought I was going to try to amend the days, didn't you? <laughs> Never know. <laughs> all right. Bloviating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I Googled it. Yeah. <laughs> you just want me to get all those phone calls. So did I, and I'm going to do it here in a little while. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You, you're just hoping I get all those emails and phone calls. That's. The, all right. We done. All right. I'd like, I'd like to call on uh, Chairman Swan for the audit committee. I'd like to call Tim Churchill up, please. And now for the exciting part of the program, federal audit. <laughs> um, we have uh, our wildlife and sport fish restoration programs audited every five years, and they go back the previous two years. So this audit that we just recently went through uh, covered the fiscal years 16, which would be July 1st, 2015, to. Uh, June 30th, 2016, and then, the, and then the next, the following year, FY 2017. Let's see. How this go? So for our audit timeline, we had a meeting in this room, actually, in, in December 2017 with the auditors from the, the feds, the OIG, um, they came in and kind of explained to us how this was going to go. Um, they were here in in our uh, in the main building in the wildlife division. A uh, good part of the, of the starting in January 2018 and for a couple of months thereafter, uh, they worked with a lot of staff, particularly fiscal staff at that time, uh, looking at what our uh, expenditures had been and whether our match was eligible and so on and so forth. Um, after that, sort of later in the year, they went into the field and uh, went out and talked to a lot of field people and looked at the things we buy and the, the equipment we use and so forth. So to quote directly from the report, they conducted the audit to determine if the state wildlife resources agency, I don't know why that isn't showing up here. Um, Somehow that slide got washed out, but let's see if I can read it. Claimed, in, claimed the costs incurred under the program grants in accordance with acts and related regulations, fish and wildlife service guidelines and grant agreements, whether we use state hunting and fishing license revenues solely for fish and wildlife program activities, and whether we reported and used program income in accordance with federal regulations. So the good news is they found no fraud, waste, mismanagement of funds, uh, of grants or grant funds, and that we complied in general with all these laws and, and rules that are in various parts of the federal code. Um, there were a couple of minor findings, and a lot of those, well, two out of the three of those findings were uh, uh, sort of related to the fact that Barry 
Sumners, who'd been federal aid coordinator for 20 years, retired right before we did this audit, and I was scrambling to learn what I was supposed to be doing, and, and uh, a couple of things slipped through the cracks that they caught. So I'll go through these findings um, quickly, which I can see it, but you can't see it. That's well, very weird. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong here? One more time. There we go. Oh, thank you. That's that one. Let's try this one. Well, the first finding was <laughs> that we inaccurately reported program income and a couple of, there it is, inaccurately reported program income in a couple of instances. Um, that was something that the auditors were looking at at virtually all the states. Uh, the service hadn't been doing a very good job at tracking it either. So it wasn't too surprising that they, they found that. And at the time we were supposed to spend any program income related to a project before we, um, uh, drew any federal funds and and we did not know that there was a way to sort of account for that in our Edison program, which is our state accounting system. Let's see. The second one was insufficient oversight of subawards. The main thing is is that the, the new regulations on how grants are handled are uh, uh, we, we, we discovered that many of the things we'd been calling contracts for years were actual sub-awards and we uh, did not uh, do all the things we were supposed to do in terms of monitoring and, and so forth. And thirdly, uh, we had some late financial reports and performance reports and that was during the period when Barry was leaving and I was coming in. Uh, but nothing uh, major and we had to do a corrective action plan and uh, we had th uh, or three findings here two of them we've already resolved and one of them is in progress so uh, ultimately we're gonna we figured out in Edison how to ensure that the program income is accounted for properly so I think we're good there the others dealing with sub awards and the, the lights the late uh, reporting has already been taken care of. So that is all I have, I believe. So any questions? Um, before questions, Ed, do you have anything you want to add uh, to what Tim just said? Yes, sir. I'll, first of all, I'll say that Tim is exactly right. Barry Sumner's handled this, the federal aid division for over 20 years. And during that time period, most everything was wrapped up as in the procedures that we're talking about here. Since since that time and since Tim has taken over, two of the findings that are in there will actually no longer be a finding if we go back and do it the other way. On program income, the federal government has changed that thing around so that program income now can be used as match, which we've fought for for years, so that's finally coming around to be a good thing. And on the uh, sub-recipient <coughs> awards, the other finding, for years we'd maintained that they weren't sub-recipient awards, but it, now we find out that technically they should have been. So I just echo what Tim said. Everything is is uh, administrative in nature, those findings. So there, there's really nothing on waste, fraud, or abuse. And we did utilize all the funding correctly, as the Fish and Wildlife Service pointed out. So thanks to Tim and all the folks in the Federal Aid Division that, that did so well in that transition period. Thank you. I can feel bloviating building at the end of the table. Bill, have you got any questions? Anybody else uh, on the committee have any questions for Tim? Uh, anybody on the commission, the audience? Uh, if so, um, Tim, thank you. That concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Swan. I'd like to call on Chairman Sanders for the Budget Committee. I'd like to call uh, Ken to the podium, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in your books, on your iPads, you should have a three-page, excuse me, a three-page financial report 
<clears throat> I'm reporting through the month of December. On the, the first page at the top is the boating fund, and on a cumulative basis, um, butting what we've received thus far through December this year versus prior year, we're 15% ahead while only expending 27% of the annual allotment through December. In the middle of the page, wildlife fund, we're approximately 6% uh, ahead of our projection for the year, and our expenses total 34% uh, of the uh, annual allotment. At the bottom, <clears throat> on the uh, endowment funds, the watchable endowment has 6.5 million balance with uh, availability of 6,200 to transfer uh, to the wildlife fund, and the lifetime sportsman has approximately 52 million eight as a uh, balance. On the second page, the wetland, <clears throat> excuse me, wetlands uh, acquisition fund has 11,988 balance. Uh, we've zeroed the maintenance out as we usually do. And the compensation, which is the in lieu of tax, <clears throat> uh, is at 885,000. Going forward, we expect, as we usually do in the May time frame, May or June time frame, to uh, pay to those counties the in lieu of tax uh, payments as certified by the comptroller's office. <coughs> On the third page, <coughs> excuse me, is our reporting of our investment in our four funds that we have the investment in. And we're reporting it through the end of January since we have uh, those, uh, those earnings. For the month of January, it increased by 1%, uh, which uh, on a cumulative basis is 3.88% since it began in October of 15. Are there any questions or comments? Any questions from anybody on the commission? Okay, thanks, Ken. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, recognize the distinguished gentleman <laughs> closest to the Mississippi, Commissioner Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, um, uh, we have discussed and, and we asked the agency to contact the treasurer to, um, to discuss moving our investment account uh, back to the SPIF account as the interest rate has increased. And um, as we got, I'm sure everybody got the email of what the discussion was and that the treasurer said they could do that. It might take a few months. Uh, I went to Director Carter and, uh, and Chairman Sanders, and, I, uh, and Director Carter is, uh, is in favor of it, and I think we're, we, should, we should ask the the agency or instruct the agency to to ask the treasurer at the most opportune time to move that money back to the interest bearing account so that the, we can get the cash flow off of it and and I'm so moved Mr. Chairman uh, as a budget committee chairman I would second that uh, I've also talked to uh, Director Carter and uh, have actually uh, initiated some conversations with the treasurer as well uh, and it, at this time, it does appear it's the best move for us. Well, thank you. So I'll, I mean, this is coming out of committee, so. Uh, is it, is it commission? Great. All right. All, uh, any discussion from the uh, commission? Any discussion from the public? All in favor? Let me say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. This passes. That concludes the budget committee. Thank you, Chairman Sanders. So we're going to change the schedule up just a little bit. We didn't finish it. We did, we did not complete the agenda yesterday. The last item was the retention and recruitment committee. And so it, when we're going to take a quick break. When we come back from break, we'll go to the retention and recruitment and then uh, government relations. And we won't have much left. So, And I'd like to thank Stacy and Faye once again for always keeping us fed and hydrated so thank you very much for that so we're, we're going to go enjoy that for a few minutes let's start back at let's say 10 30 and uh let's please try to stay on that if we can we'll start back at 10 30.
Cox for retention and recruitment committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe Don King is on deck. Is he here? Mr. Chairman, if it be okay, uh, could we let the lady go first? Miss Jennifer Wisniewski. She, I think we've got her present. Oh, no, looks like we've got, got me. Okay. All right. Good deal. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come give you an update about some things we've been working toward in the uh, way of public service announcements, using some celebrities that are, are uh, within our, our home base here in Tennessee and taking advantage of that. And first off, I want to say uh, thank you so much to Commissioner Stroud for uh, the ability to help use his contacts to... Uh, uh, make some of these things happen, and, and especially to get back to the to uh, one of our go-tos. Mr. Charlie Daniels has helped us out. Uh, in 2012, we were able to travel to his studio and uh, do some, some public service announcements. We're due to do that again next week. Next Wednesday, we'll, we'll be meeting there early at his studio, and uh, our production crew will be going out and setting things up, and, and uh, we've got scripts already loaded in the teleprompter and sent out to uh, Charlie. So uh, he, he's agreed to do that uh, as he has in the past, and we really appreciate that. Um, one, other, uh, one other update is that uh, next Monday we'll be doing a PA shoot um, in Dayton, Tennessee, with uh, Mr. Michael Neal, uh, a pro angler who is – helped us out with some Asian carp messaging. And uh, he's also agreed to help us out with doing some, uh, some updated spots on uh, proper releasing of a, of a fish and, and uh, uh, some other things like that just to, to uh, uh, help motivate people to do the right thing when they're, they're uh, doing catch and release on their, their fish and also to uh, uh, help help bolster the hey reminding everybody it's time to buy a license again because it's that time of year so we'll have uh messages ready for him as well and we'll we'll be using his uh his boat his his rig and and uh we uh jason Harmon has it lined up with uh, one of our officers over there to uh travel in one of our boats uh, alongside him get some get some great video of that so we're looking forward to that and uh, so that'll be next Monday. And um, uh, just, uh, oh, and the, the third thing is that uh, during the commission meeting this past January, uh, Jennifer Wisniewski, she's meet, been meeting all kinds of people, including Bill Dance out at uh, Commissioner Cox's house the night of the uh, social event. And she made a connection there, got some scripts to Mr. Dance, and he uh, brought us a, uh, a video, uh, sent us a video of, of some things that he's cut from the scripts that Jennifer provided. We're, and I'm just going to show you this just as an example. He did several for us, uh, but this is uh, an unedited version. This is just kind of the raw footage. We'll put some graphics and things on here and uh, uh, enhance it uh, uh, somewhat so anyway you you won't see the finished product but this this kind of gives you an idea truly conservationist through their support and management and the operation of public fish oh let's see here let me see if I can raise that level a little bit fishing areas and the science and research needed to make sure wildlife and fish populations thrive or are successful. Now, how does that happen? When you buy your license or purchase fishing tackle or boat fuel, you help fund federal wildlife and sport fishing restoration programs. A portion of these funds come back to Tennessee to help maintain and improve more than 19,000 rivers and streams, 29 major reservoirs, 
and legendary sport fishing populations. Now, the only way to make sure Tennessee gets its fair share is to buy your Tennessee fishing license. To buy your license or for more information, visit tnwildlife.org. Sounds just like Bill Dance. Sure enough. All right. But we, we really appreciate him taking the time to do that for us. He sends these in. We, we cut them up and use them for radio, TV, and Internet. And uh, it's uh, a, a, a really good contribution. We really appreciate that. And thank you, Commissioner Cox, for helping, helping make that happen. Um, um, let's see. My next point was that, uh, oh, I just want to pause just for a second and step back to last evening and thank all the outgoing commissioners for taking the time to get with me and sit down and just share some thoughts. And I appreciate you all doing that. And I really appreciate Mr. Todd Mazaras back there with the headset on for taking all that video and stitching it all together, working his magic on it, and uh, bringing you a product last night that we were all able to enjoy. Uh, I appreciate his input, and uh, thank you all so much for, for contributing to that and sharing your thoughts. Uh, Don and Todd, thank you so much for doing that. It was spectacular, and this is going to be a great memory to, to have, so thank you. So all right, much. we'll get each of you a copy of it for sure. And uh, I believe Commissioner Stroud has some updates on some future PSAs. Yeah, this is for, uh, thanks, Don. This is for the month of March. Next month, uh, we are scheduling with Don and Jennifer um, uh, shoots for the PSA uh, for some real iconic artists. We really discussed uh, and talked about having some major uh, artists that have been around for a while that has a TV cum and, of course, has the uh, uh, a way of getting to more people. Anyway, uh, so uh, we have Reba McIntyre that will be doing this in March. Uh, Brooks and Dunn uh, will be in March. Uh, Tracy Lawrence uh, in March, and also Clint Black. And <clears throat> the, the good thing about this is this is before they all hit the road. Actually, some of them are working right now, but uh, there'll be product out there that they're going to be promoting, and, and they're going to be very public. So it's going to help our PSAs because of the amount of exposure they're going to have for the next three months before they get into the summer touring. So I think we're hitting this, Don, at a good time. Um, and then we'll fill in the blanks after March with artists that are newer, like we talked about. But we want to make sure and get these iconic artists uh, for the impact of what we're looking for for our, our message. And, um, and it just also makes us... I think it get, we just have a different level of, uh, of exposure with that. So we'll be doing that. Um, uh, Don is going to be contacting with me all of these artists, and we'll let you guys know when we're doing uh, the actual shoots. And just to let you know, we've talked about this before. Beforehand, they wanted to have a little bit more control um, uh, over the actual shoot. But after talking to Charlie and, and the, you know, the people that we talked to for them, uh, Don is gonna, Don's crew is going to do all of those. So I think it's not only going to be really good, it's going to be consistent. And it'll also, I think, with the, the amount of uh, work that you're doing and the way you'll be able to intercut uh, these, uh, these shoots, we're going to have not only what they do, but we'll have that times 10 because of our editing um, purposes and, and, and because of those, those processes is going to help us out. So, Don, hats off to you, buddy, you and Jennifer. All Thanks. right, thank you. And speaking of Jennifer, she'll be up next, but uh, I just wanted to say that uh, it's been great having Jennifer on board. I tell you, it's, it's opened up all kinds of possibilities and, and extra things that there just hadn't been the time to do before. And Jennifer's expertise is uh, second to none in what she does, so... Um, you know, I've had people say, well, how, how does this work, these, these divisions? You know, you, you guys have two separate divisions. I say, well, it works really well. We just kind of don't really notice the difference. You know, where the, the lines are great, and we all work together on, on multiple projects. So, um, and if, if it's okay, I would like to take just a moment just to 
uh, highly recommend uh, if anybody's looking for something to put on their their playlist I'd like to highly recommend the new bow weevils uh, project and uh, I mean uh, Commissioner Stroud didn't know anything about this but uh, if you look a little bit closer there on the left of the screen, you might recognize a familiar face, but uh, they're, they're sort of they're sort of incognito, but uh, it is a great project. I've, I've downloaded it and listened to it. It's some good music. So uh, I highly recommend it. Thanks so much. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do. like ZZ Top. Yeah. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it, and James, Thank you for, it's, it's not easy wrangling all these folks, not, not, not their fault, it's just their schedules and the people you have to work through to get this done. So I know it's not just a simple phone call. So besides being our chaplain and our rock star producer, you're now our manager, so, and our drummer. So thank you. Yeah, I, I want to make a comment about I, people. <laughs> um, Everybody may realize it, but if you don't, I'm not sure everybody appreciates what a what a um, um, an opportunity we have because James Stroud is part of this commission. His contacts, his experience, his 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 business is something that I would dare say not another state in America has got that resource and and to do what we're able to do with the country music people and 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 uh, whoever else we can get to help us and and it's a it's a real uh, benefit to this agency to uh, to have you do that and we really appreciate it so that's not so bad you want me to keep going uh, Jennifer All right. Well, before I get into the presentation on how the digital marketing efforts are going and all the initiatives with our new licensing system, I did want to address Commissioner Woodson's question from yesterday about license sales and trends after states see CWD on the horizon. Um, so we heard from 14 states out of the 26 so far, and the one common thread is every single one of them, they must be biologists, they said it's complicated, right? They, we can't give you one single answer. Um, but the main thing to know is there's many factors that can affect license sales, whether it's um, license structure changes, license prices, um, decline in hunter numbers overall, um, hurricanes and weather patterns, like in Texas, Hurricane Harvey last year, that had a bigger increase or bigger impact on license sales than anything they've ever seen. Um, there's been other things like EHD outbreaks in states, but in general, what you can see in those 14 states is there's about a two year small dip, especially in the region that they found CWD. And then it kind of recovers and so it's kind of like any other thing that happens with an impact on a license, uh, whether it's a price or a structure change or any of that. It's a small dip, and then they get mad at you, and then they come back, right? So that's kind of what we've seen. Is there any other follow-up questions to that that we could answer for you specifically? I don't have any, but thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I want to talk to you a little bit about R3, which is recruitment, retention, and reactivation. Those are strategies to keep and um, maintain our customers and get new ones, right? Um, so several years ago, I think it was October 31st of 2016, we launched the new licensing system. So in that, um, there's been lots of upgrades, and we're gonna talk about a few of them here that are mainly directed at keeping customers. So one of the thing we launched was a collector's card series. So each year you can buy one of these really nice Tennessee artist made cards, and a dollar from that $5 upgrade goes to digital marketing. So it gets invested into that pot of money that we use for digital marketing. So another thing that we do is triggered emails and lapsed customer communications. So um, when your license is about to expire, everybody 
is about to get that email that says your license is going to expire. Um, we do um, 30 days after, you know, to remind them. We do a year after, and then we do lapsed communications throughout the year. Um, we were able to do a few in November and December when I got brought on board, and between those and the triggered emails, we were proud to say that we got $777,000 in click-through revenue off of those emails in 2018, and about 500000 of that came in the November, December months. So we were proud of that. Uh, auto renew. If you want to, you can set your license to auto renew and forget it. So we had 53,491 items set to auto renew this past February 18th, and by golly, they auto renewed and we made $2.2 .2 million in direct license revenue. Um, we have the updated app, so this is ability to send out push notifications going forward, so we'll be able to communicate with our hunters and anglers via, you know, that wonderful device that everyone carries around so closely and um, be able to communicate better to people that way too. Um, activity packages, these are a biggie because people are sometimes confused by what licenses they need to go do the thing that they want to do. So we simplified it for our customers and said, okay, you want to go trout fishing, here's the trout package. If you want to go hunt deer on public land, here's the public deer hunter package. So these packages automatically add that hard card into it. And what we're finding is the average price with a package is $84 and the average price without a package is $47. So there's a big upsell there. So maybe people aren't getting all the licenses they need, or maybe people are glad to pay that extra money just to know, hey, I got the package. I know I've got everything I need. Oops, wrong way. So let's talk about the digital marketing. So we placed ads in different websites and followed customers around. I don't know if you've ever gone shopping for something and then you see the ad follows you around the internet. We do that too. So um, the digital ads last year, we converted or made 36,969 transactions and that returned $1.9 million in revenue to the agency. And to look at that a little bit closer, um, the agency spent $273,000 and the revenue generated was about 1.9 million. And so that's a return on investment of 6.93 to one. Now, I don't know if you guys do a lot of investing, but I don't know many investments that you can make $7 off every dollar you invest. So this has been very successful. And then to break down those transactions, you can go about 37,000 tran 37, transactions, excuse me, um, new customers. We're making new customers. These are people that had never had an account with us before, purchased a license based off of click-throughs from these ads. Um, then we've got inactive customers. Those are people that are lapsed. So more than half of the people that clicked on one of these ads were lapsed. They didn't have a current active license. Um, and then another important group that we like to look at is the 12-month lapse because not only are they lapsed, but we didn't get to certify them for a year. So we missed out on the federal funds that go along with those lapsed people. So those are especially valuable reactivations. So you're looking at over 70% of the customers that we went and got were people that didn't have a license. So, I mean, these are very valuable um, ads that we're placing. But of course, we want to uh, be in the spirit of continuous improvement. So we're gonna be still targeting new and lapsed customers and retargeting people that, you know, they call it cart abandonment. So when you come and you visit our website and maybe you click on, I wanna purchase the license and then you leave for one reason or another or, you know, saw something shiny and forgot you were going to buy your license. Um, and then we're going to do strategic, strategic digital campaigns and outreach campaigns to certain um, websites. So if you're on Cabela's or uh, Bass Pro or shopping any of those sportsy kind of sites, then we'll, we'll target you there. Another thing that we do is Amazon matching. So if you're on Amazon and say you're looking for a dry bag or camping gear, then we've serve you up ads there because you're searching for related things. And we're also able to only target people that don't have a current license. So it makes it super valuable. Um, and then we also are going to do look-alike audience. Um, people like people that have searched for Ford F-150s, that might be a good one. Uh, NASCAR fans, um, sports fans in general, um, other 
things that we might look for or people that uh, are interested in outdoorsy type things, camping and kayaking, those types of things. So those are easy ways that we can really laser target the, the community that is most likely to purchase licenses. So I wanted to talk about a little, little bit of email success that we had in um, geo-targeted messaging and um, just how we can really track and target folks through email. Um, we, in November, we sent out a deer season reminder. We were able to immediately react 465 people. We made $50,000 in license revenue, and that was an email. You know, that's wonderful lapsed communications that we can certainly get out there in front of people. Another one that we did um, with the help from our regional uh, staff, we were able to get some um, hot fishing and hot hunting spots in the different regions. So we separated the state into different polygons and did some targeted messaging just as a test to see what kind of a response rate we got. And with some of those messages, we were able to reactivate 155 people through email and made $31,000. Again, this is direct license revenue. It doesn't include federal funds. Uh, texting. We experimented with a little bit of texting, too. So um, uh, we tend to be a little more experimental with texting because it's new, and we don't want to make people mad that TWRA is all of a sudden texting them. So we, we did a smaller test group, and we had 121 people click on that text message and go renew their license. And again, this is in November. This is at the end of our license year. We were still able to reactivate people and get people back into the ecosystem, so to speak, so that we can keep them in the fold. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can um, reactivate people and target them and get them back in the license buying game. Uh, so going forward, we're going to continue to target, target, target. There's a lot of groups that we can reach out to, whether it's Hunter Ed graduates that don't have a license yet. That's a big chunk of folks. You wouldn't think so, but it is. Um, account holders with no license. So somebody that's come in and put all their information in, but they never purchased anything. We can follow up with them and find out why. Boat registrants with no fishing license. Why do you have a boat and you don't have a fishing license? I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? But there's still a lot of people that do. Um, Geolocating opportunities. People always want to know where they can go that's near them. Nobody wants to drive more than an hour to go fishing or hunting, really, unless you're going to stay there for a couple of days. So um, targeting people with opportunities that are close by. Um, we're also doing a sweepstakes in the southeast with Brant Information Systems that's launching next month um, with a fishing stuff giveaway, and that will be specifically targeted to people that don't have a license so we can get their data and then track them down and follow them until they buy a license. And then we also have uh, seasonally timed messages. Of course, we've got turkey season coming up. We've got wonderful fishing about to start happening, um, so we'll certainly use those messages. Um, we're also going to work with tourism and state parks. Um, state parks has lots of great fishing, and we can use promo codes with them to try to go after people that haven't purchased their license yet so we can get them back in the fold. And again, outreach to the outdoorsy type, the kayakers, the campers, the hikers, and the bikers, and all of those types of people. And so again, going, going ahead, we're going to be using more geofencing. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but you can big brother people through um, seeing where they are. And if they're at a certain spot, you can serve them up ads depending on where they are. So if, say if they were at the NWTF convention last week um, and they're lapsed and they're local then we can say, okay, these folks were at the NWTF convention. They should have a license. So let's get them an ad and make sure they get a license. Um, Pandora is another place that we're going to be doing advertising. Uh, face filters. Uh, the younger generation loves face filters on Snapchat and uh, Instagram, so we've got a few face filters out there now. Uh, we also updated our ads for this year, and we'll be targeting more long-term lapse people. There's people that haven't purchased a license in five years. We can send them the we miss you message. Did life get too busy for the outdoors? You know, that kind of thing. Of course, content marketing, and we'll make a calendar for messaging. We're working on enhancing our uh, media relationships as well as leveraging the new very valuable PSAs. Thank you, Mr. James Strout. Um, but yeah, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Did y'all hear that? That's exciting numbers. Yeah. It's just, I don't think you've missed anybody, really. <laughs> But uh, just very excited, and I appreciate everything you're doing. I'm just glad you're here. Yeah, you're me too. Great job. Oh, I couldn't be and, uh, more happy. I'm very excited. I know Commissioner Cox was uh, 
a big part of getting Brent in on this, so I appreciate everything. Exciting Thank you. numbers. I have a question. Sure. And this will show my ignorance. But when you say you're people who shop Amazon or they shop Cabela's or whatever, and then you can target them, mm -hmm. do Cabela's, Amazon, do they have, you don't have to have their permission or any, nothing, that's just out there. It's Google. Google's everybody's. So there's no, no, no hooks to anybody on that. No. Yes, sir. So I have no idea what a polygon or a face filter is, but keep it up. <laughs> I'll just keep doing it. I got lost in the millions of dollars. How much did, how many millions did all that add up to? This will be um, in a regular year. Once all of the email pieces go out, this will be $5 million a year. Last year it was about three. That's, three and a half. You know, it's really exciting. I think it was three years ago that Brent came and presented. You know, we looked at what Georgia was doing and Florida was doing. We we're going, oh, there, there's no way we can get this kind of return. And I believe it wasn't it five, wasn't it like five times that they had, and we have seven. I, I think that's right. I don't remember, so, but it's a lot. Yeah, and it's, I think it's even better than than predicted. So Your RO, the ROI in Tennessee is certainly higher than the ROI that we had in Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner Oler makes a great point. We stole their person who was generating that. Right? I have one, so, more, point. So, I have one yeah. more point I want to so, yeah. say. Just I comment. stole, willingly, willingly came. Just a comment. We, we are fishing in Florida right now, and they have this brand. We even bought a lobster permit this time. We don't lobster. <laughs> it was grouped in. <laughs> it was grouped in. In the package. And we got a hard card. We did all that because we... You knew we were, that one day, but it's like lobster really dirty. My husband said, "Yeah, go ahead and get the lobster thing while you're at it. It's like five dollars." It's up selling. It's easy. Commissioner Swan, um, <clears throat> Jennifer, do you have any idea what percent of the pop-ups actually are clicked on? Yeah, it's about one percent. Is that and, average? Uh, how, is that how would that compare? Yeah, that's, how that's would that normal. compare with? Um, <laughs> say other uh, digital media pop it's, that's right right on target of target. where you know i'd love to tell you that it was more or less but they cost sometimes fractions of a penny depending on where the ads are served those are averages some places cost us a dollar for a click through some places cost us a penny so if you ever want to do a deep dive i can certainly show you but on average it's normal it's right where ads go i, I don't know if y'all have ever clicked on a digital ad to purchase something but Sometimes it's more about following somebody around and giving them that mental reminder than it is that click through. Well, whenever there's a uh, political a political person running, I don't like. I click through on his ads as many <laughs> times as I can. To there's a dollar. Money. There's a dollar. There's a dollar. I love it. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Any yes, other sir. question, uh, Dennis? <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Cox. Uh, the great presentation and uh, the numbers are just astounding and uh, I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. I do have a couple of questions. One uh, kind of a follow up on Jeff Cook. I would like to know what a face, face filter is. Uh, I may have been filtered before. I don't know. <laughs> so could you could you say what that is? Sure. Have you ever do you know what Snapchat is? Uh, I'm vaguely familiar. OK, so when you put your when you put your phone up to take a selfie, it will put some kind of filter on your face. It'll make you look like a deer. It can make you look like a bunny. It can make you look like any sort of number of things. Um, it can give you different hair color. It can give you, you know, funny makeup. It can, uh, the ones that we right, designed. So I have not been filtered. <laughs> the ones that we've designed make you look like you have caught a fish. All right. Or have gone on a boat, that kind of thing. All right. Well, and the, the second thing is I, I'm glad to see that you're targeting uh, kayakers, canoers, campers, uh, hopefully bird watchers yes. are included in that. Yes, for sure. And, and uh, in that targeting, do you specifically tell them how their money helps the resource they use? Um, I just wondered how specific your targeting is. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the messages. That's why I'm trying to use all of these wonderful PSAs to say that message so that we can serve them up an ad afterwards that tells them where their money went. But I kind of call it the, the count me license. Like if you're a fan of the outdoors, be counted and get the federal funds back and buy a license. That's the best investment that you can make in wildlife and water quality and anything in this state. Absolutely, and that's the messaging that we've been missing that uh, Commissioner Cox has been um, 
has brought up on multiple occasions, and I, I can't agree with him more. And uh, James Stroud, thank you for what you're doing too. I, I, that's it's amazing uh, the the people and the resources that you have, and and how they're going to make such a positive impact on this. And uh, just great job all around. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to commend you, Bill, for you, you've been bird dogging this for years. And thank you for that. This is all a result of your hard work. Well, it's this is another one of those instances that um, um, that the commission or a commissioner gets credit for something that that the agency did. Uh, besides James Stroud and his and his efforts and his resources, uh, all I've done is talk and. This effort started in 2005, and 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 with Michael May and Chris Richardson, and of course Director Carter, and where we are, and Jennifer's on board, and what Don's doing. It's, you know, I'm just excited as hell about what we're doing, and, and excuse my French, but uh, it's it's. Um, I'm just happy where we are. It, they're doing a great, fabulous job, and I want to thank especially Michael. Michael's the one that went to a conference somewhere and found Brant and came back and was talking to me about it and it's it's great. And Director Carter sent him and Chris negotiated the contract and <laughs> it might take thirteen years to do something, but you find <laughs> but it's 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 fabulous. So we really appreciate it. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Anything else? I got, I got one thing to say. I'll take thirty seconds. I was uh, head of this committee the last time I was on the board. And um, Bill kept beating on me and beating on me about certain things and how to do this and how to do that, and he was just a pest. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I show back up for this, and I'll be quick, but Bill turned this whole thing around, and I'm, I'm just telling you that I had no idea of the potential of what he was capable of doing for us now. So uh, back to you, Bill. This was uh, uh, what an education, first of all, and what an inspiration, secondly. And I think the team that we have right now, it's all sort of in the past six months, eight months, a year, it's been boiling over here and everything, but it's finally coming together. And I think that we're getting ready to have a major impact, coordinated impact, from us to the public in the right way that makes a lot of sense. And, and it, it does go back to Bill. He, he just was a, a relent, is the word relentless? Yeah, relentless on what his vision was. And uh, boy, hats off to you, son. Have absolutely great work. Thank you. Um, is that all you have to Thank you so much. Uh, if Director Carter, I believe you're up with are you are you going to talk about uh, Project Wild, or are you going to just mention it and turn it over? I hope he's not going to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> well, after Don and Jennifer, I feel so boring <laughs> right now. So, and I don't need any affirmation of that. <laughs> so, it, I don't know. Some some months ago, maybe a year or more ago, Commissioner Cox was talking about. What could we do to put some kind of education program together that would go into our school systems that would not only acquaint people with the outdoors and wildlife management and the agency, but tell them where the money comes from, talk about the North American model of wildlife management and all those kind of things. As you know, school systems, and, and I'll defer to Commissioner Woodson real quickly on all this, but school systems are so complicated and each one varies a little. They all have their own specific things from the, the, their, the state level and the community level on and on through local school boards. So in any case, it, it can be a, a real tough nut to crack to try to get something new in there. We've had hunter education in school systems for years and that's really filled a void that has you know, that goes back to the early 70s as, as to not having any contact in there. About that same time later on, uh, I guess in the mid, mid 70s or so, we began to to work with Project Wild. And there's, there's a, a number of those. There's a Project Wild, a Project Learning Tree, and on and on. But the Project Wild is specific to wildlife. And it was a curriculum that was put together so that people could not only utilize that project in their science class to utilize whatever. For instance, if in the math classes, 
they were using turkeys populations as an example of exponential growth, and they talked about that. Then they got into the health side of things, and they were talking about overpopulations, and they used deer, and they, they pulled games together that the kids would play in the school system that was actually called Oh Deer, and they would chase each, pe each other around and on and on. So not to belabor all that, Project Wild was an integral part of the agency for a while, and then after a while, we dropped out of that, and it's been fairly recently. Pandy Upchurch was our, our most recently our person. Before that, Patricia Miller, who did most of that work. We're trying to get back to some level of that, but the books are very expensive. I wanted to show you. This this is the Project Wild book, so you can, you can see how big it is. And, but it's written, and the curriculum has gone over and over by a number of people. And then the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies took over Project Wild last year. It was kind of a standalone in, in in Georgia Jennifer was the the uh, coordinator for their project wild she could answer a lot more questions about it than I could but again back when it was first starting I was a project wild facilitator and we went to school system so I just wanted to mention that is one program that's already up and running and we can utilize when when we want to try to get that message into the schools but I know Commissioner Cox has a, a larger vision as you've just talked about here a second ago on many different levels so with that, Commissioner Cox, I'll just defer back to you. Thank you, Director Carter. My, as as usual, I've got a big idea and do a lot of talking, but and need everybody else to to be to work on. My idea is that that, and I had heard about Project Wild. If we could get a a, a curriculum in schools and teach kids, whether it's six, eight, tenth graders, whatever the somebody would decide was the best age about conservation and habitat and and all of those types of, of non-consumptive uh, environment, environmental uh, streams, rivers, whatever, and then tie it to hunting and tie it to fishing and the North American model for wildlife conservation and how hunting licenses and fishing licenses pay for that. You don't have to talk about killing animals, but Kids need to know where this money comes from, or most of it, for to fund all these great things that these agencies do. And you could also put a history and and teach about TWRA and what TWRA does and how it's funded and what how it does the things that you've just learned about, or you could filter that through the whole course. So that's my idea. So I've asked Ben West with Lone Oaks and University of Tennessee and uh, you know, I might ask Ben to comment on the idea and what we've talked about, but, and I've also talked to Commissioner Woodson because of her uh, great education efforts and would score, and now she's gonna be in, a, in a, uh, a great position at University of Tennessee at Knoxville to, uh, and I would like to ask the commission to, to um, approve asking the agency to ask Dr. West to perhaps put a committee together, write a curriculum, find out how we get it in schools, and develop the whole project. And of course, it'll cost money, but I think federal funds and a UT match would pay for it. And then we could, with maybe with Commissioner Woodson's help, we would find out the best route to get it into the schools statewide. And, uh, and it might be something that we could change hearts and minds of, of, of children who become adults and instead of anti-hunters and ignorant adults they will be knowledgeable about what we do and how it gets done and and it might help our outreach efforts in the future so that's kind of my idea um ben would you care to say anything about that just briefly Now it is. Yeah, so uh, Ben West worked for the University of Tennessee, so real pleasure to be here. Yeah, Commissioner Cox called me, uh, what, maybe three weeks ago uh, to, to get my input about this idea. And as I told him uh, at the time and, and have reiterated to him in some conversations, you know, writing a curriculum uh, is easy. Figuring out how to deliver it to a bunch of kids through a broad-based school, you know, a, a base system, much more difficult. And Commissioner Woodson, you probably agree with that. Uh, 
It, it is very difficult. Uh, teachers and school systems have a lot on their plate. They have a pretty rigid set of uh, standards that they have to teach to. So it is very difficult to, to insert things like a, a wildlife fisheries conservation uh, curriculum into schools. But I don't know that it's impossible either. Uh, and, and if you look around, there are some reasons for optimism. Uh, our experiences at Lone Oaks Farm tell me there's some reason for optimism. We've had a few thousand kids come to Lone Oaks in the last year and a half to uh, engage in hands-on learning opportunities that use agriculture and natural resources and wildlife and fisheries and the outdoors as the mechanism to teach STEM through the lens and, and, and that hit the learning standards that, that teachers are having to teach to. Uh, so so we've, we've realized through that act opportunity and, and activities that yes that they are they are very focused on stem learning standards and on learning standards in general but they're also hungry for opportunities to show kids how that plays out in the real world another reason for optimism just as an example there's 180,000 4-H members across Tennessee the vast majority of which are 4-H members because they're part of a school-based 4-H program and we've got 120 or so 4-H agents across the state uh, that get into the schools and deliver educational programming fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, because we're, we've been able to demonstrate to schools that we, there's a value proposition there, that we can bring things to the classroom that enhance their learning objectives. So um, I, have, I, I certainly don't have uh, many answers at all to, to this issue. I have a lot of questions, and I do have some optimism. I've talked to Mike Butler. Uh, they obviously do a lot of youth work. Uh, he would be interested in bringing some resources to bear to at least begin exploring whether this is a viable idea. If it is, what it would look like and what it would, it would take to move forward. And I think there are lots of people. Certainly we have folks at the University of Tennessee that have expertise in this area. The agency has people that have expertise in this area. Uh, so so it's, it, is it uh, doable? I'm not sure, but I think it's, uh, it is reasonable enough to explore. Any questions for Dr. West or Commissioner Woodson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I don't have a question for you, Ben, but I totally agree with everything you just said. Um, I, I just a couple of thoughts. First, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Cox for bringing this before the commission. It's something that we've talked about several times over the course of the last year or so, and I just consider me a volunteer for anything I can do to support Ben and the work that he'll be leading and that you'll be leading, Commissioner Cox. I, I share Ben's optimism. Tennessee has, after a decade of real struggles, has some of the highest academic standards in the country. And there's a lot of conversation about those, but in their essence, it's about an expectation that when a child leaves high school, that child can read complex text, can take a bunch of different pieces of information and come to a decision. The same process that we go through here where we take in a lot of different pieces of evidence and then we come to our own conclusions and we can articulate both in oral ways but also in written language about how we might do that, how we might function in society as citizens. And so that's really what that's all about. And so my optimism on this is what an important set of curricular materials that we could create that are about such an important part of our heritage as a state and what we're trying to accomplish. I think for me, the key is going to be aligning this curriculum with the very high standards that we have because as Ben said, teachers are hungry for high quality instructional materials that help reach that bar. The content is actually, it's not irrelevant, but it's not as it, just kind of spitting out data is not what the education system's trying to accomplish. What it's trying to accomplish is the ability to take a variety of subjects, understand them, and then function with them. And so this curriculum could be incredibly helpful in the sciences, in math, in English language arts, and a whole lot of different ones. So the key, I think, in finding the right place to put it in is really being dedicated with educational resource experts on how we align this curriculum with what students are going to be expected to do throughout their educational career. That's doable. 
we've got experts all across the state that can help get that done. And I think it's a great idea, but I think that's going to be the kind of hole we've got to run through to make sure that it's an asset for teachers who have a ton on their plate. And I do know that they're very, very hungry for high quality instructional materials. Great. Thank you. Um, anyone else have a question or comment? Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure how, if you just, if you want to take a vote on it or without objection, ask the agency to work with, with Dr. West and, or to come up with a proposal of how, what this would look like and how much it would cost in, you know, I don't know, Ben, 90 days. How about next week? Well, as quickly as you possibly can, obviously, but, you know, put together a committee if you need to do that or, or write a proposal or, or uh, some, some more information that you think and a proposal for what the money might look like and come back to the commission or the agency with, a, with that information as soon as you can, if that's okay. Are you You've done this for 12 years, and if you'd like, I, I think it's, uh, if you'd like to, to memorialize it, as we say, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I'll put it that in the form of a motion, if that'd be Let's acceptable. Let's do it. Sure. A second from Commissioner Swan, any discussion from the commission? I uh, know. <laughs> any, any discussion from the public? So all in favor of the recommendation for Project Wild Curriculum to be developed, as per Commissioner Cox's suggestion, let me know by saying aye. Uh, Any opposed? No. Nope. Thank you. It's a very great much. idea. Thank you. I think that's all we've got. Thank you, Mr. Cox. I just hate me and you were sitting here saying all the things Jamie said, I know. and then she get, <laughs> says it. We we were having that conversation. And she, exactly. She, we said she, everything she, she said. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would sound a whole lot better. <laughs> so, I'd like to recommend Chairman Stroud. Thank you, Mr. Relations Chairman. Committee. Chair recognizes <clears throat> Chris Richardson, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm going to try to give you a brief legislative update. Um, discussing with the commissioners last evening, there's a lot of things that uh, you all wanted me to cover, and I struggled very hard to, to try and come up with a way to get all of this done in a timely fashion, but in the words of Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. So we're going to try to get through it. Uh, the Tennessee General Assembly is back in session, uh, as you know, and things move at different paces uh, throughout the year. Right now, we've kind of moved beyond the trot, and we're not quite to the gallop stage. We're kind of in a trollop stage. So the bill filed deadline has been coming past. Um, there's no squirrely dog related bills or things like that, but there are 1,500 pieces of legislation out there. Um, and, and some of them are directly re relevant to us, most of them are not. Um, for instance, there's bills all the way from naming the blue tick coonhound the state Tennessee dog to a bill that would require legal services to only write bills in plain English, which I kind of affectionately refer to as the spoon bill because it's spoon feeding this information to legislators in a much, much simpler fashion. Um, as far as some bills, I'm not going to go over all of them. I will, I will provide you guys with a whole list of all the bills that we're tracking with the help of Tracy and Thomas and Kim. Um, the legal team is tracking a little over 200 bills. And some of them are, are issues that we're going to directly have a say in. Some are just relevant to state government. But I will provide that whole list for you. I just want to highlight a few bills today that I think are kind of the most highest on my priority list right now. One of, the, one of them is a bill that we are uh, advocating for. It, it would adjust our ability to have raffles. Uh, we, right now, we have the statutory authority to raffle one special elk tag based on the success of that program. Uh, we are asking the General Assembly to grant us four additional tags in other areas. So we, we might consider a special deer hunt, a special turkey hunt, or other opportunities that really can showcase the state. Uh, that bill has moved through the Agricultural Subcommittee and through the Senate Energy Committee already. So we're, we're headed for finance where I don't think we'll have any trouble because this bill actually shows a positive fiscal note uh, and about a $200,000 increase to, to the wildlife fund. So. 
excited about that bill and, and hopefully we'll have that expanded raffle program available in 2020. There are, uh, there is a bill uh, that we've had some conversations about that would repeal the ammunition tax in Tennessee. Uh, as you know, the state ammunition tax is the little 10 cent stickers that go on the box of ammunition. And that on average generates between four and $500,000 worth of revenue to the state. The bill is actually being bought by, brought by the retailers who uh, are complaining about the amount of time that it takes to affix these stickers to the box. So the, the conversation that, that we're having on behalf of the agency is, is not one of we're totally against repeal of the tax. We're totally against losing the revenue associated with the tax. We're totally against uh, you know, not being made whole if they make changes there. But as far as the ability to perhaps streamline that tax or bring it into new technology, uh, or if there is an appetite to uh, repeal the tax but make the agency whole with a direct appropriation, that's, that's likely something we could support as well. Uh, there is a bill relative to the action the commission took on chronic wasting disease, uh, and specifically the ban on the use of natural urine. There is a bill in the General Assembly that would allow the use of natural urine in Tennessee in certain circumstances, basically the uh, Archery Trades Association standards that I'm sure many of you are, are familiar with. There's a set of standards for certain urine producers, uh, but there's, there's a lot of concerns surrounding that bill of who's going to ensure that those standards are met. Obviously, there is still some risk, even if it is smaller. Uh, the risk of the use of natural urine is, is still more of a risk than what we have now with a complete ban. So we're working with the sponsors um, and, and taking an, op an opposed position on that legislation as it currently stands. Also, perhaps working with the, the sponsors and the proponents of the legislation to see if they would be interested in foregoing the bill and coming and presenting to you all. Because I maintain that issues of manner and means uh, are better handled by the commission as opposed to being handled in the General Assembly process. Um, there are three bills, three bills relative to the paddle craft or the commercial livery uh, rules that, that you all recently passed in January. Uh, to give you an update on those rules that you passed in January, Governor Lee instituted a rulemaking freeze for 90 days, so that will delay the effectiveness of the rules that we passed in January, which has some impacts. On, on, directly relative to the Paddlecraft bill, uh, there's, there's varying approaches, one all the way from a straight repeal of our authority to uh, some very specific modifications to some of the action that you took. So we're working with all of the, the bill sponsors and the proponents of that to, to try to get to a uh, a good place. Um, there are, I think, three bills that deal with free licenses or reduced cost hunting and fishing licenses. Uh, I needed to measure my ejection fraction because I thought I was going to have a heart attack when I saw the, fis the potential fiscal impact for some of these bills. But then I remembered. We passed a bill that said if the General Assembly ever creates a free or reduced cost license that they would have to make up for that loss of revenue with the general fund. So. Those are really kind of the, the main bills that, that we're focusing on right now. Again, I will send you uh, those uh, in the form of an email for you to review. And certainly, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to speak with you all personally on those. With that, Mr. Chairman, I will be happy to answer any questions in this regard. Thank you, Chris. Very good. Any questions? But before I relinquish the mic, and I know there's going to be a whole bunch of tributes and things that are going to happen in a minute, um, but I want to take my opportunity while I have the microphone to say a few words about some of the commissioners. You know, some of you I've, I've spent six years with, uh, others only four, but there's been good times, there's been bad times, there's been challenging times. I mean, sometimes it felt like we were in the middle of a desert, no water, no camel, toe to toe with some of the <laughs> insurmountable odds. And, but somehow we got through it, and we got through it by working together. Call the uh, question. <laughs> there were times when I thought I was going to suffer death by strangulation at the hands of Commissioner Cox. But he and I would work through issues, and we would talk, and, and ultimately we always ended up with a better product than when we started. Commissioner Swan, uh, you know, I, I don't purport to know anything about an, Afri uh, an African safari, but something tells me I'm going to see a picture of you one day with a spear meant for a rhino or some sort of other African beast. And, and, and I enjoyed speaking with you about all those things that I didn't know. Um, 
Commissioner Baker, who's noticeably absent, is kind of like the Hamburglar. You know, he pops in, he pops out. And, uh, but, but we worked on a lot of great things together, too. And, and for Commissioner Woodson and, and Chairman Cook, um, the leadership that you all exhibited during your chairmanships especially, uh, can't tell you how much better of a place we're in politically, legislatively, from some of the approaches that you've taken. And, and I know, uh, hopefully, soon to be Chairman Holbert will continue those. So from me, you all make my job easier because of the job that you do. So thank you. Good job, man. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Smarter than I thought. <laughs> that was good. Chairman, I'm, uh, we're done with this one. Thank you. Chris, you're the master. So, Don, do you have something for us? So, so, yeah. So, thank you, Commissioner Woodson and Commissioner. Yeah. Fish filtering here. Y'all, thank you very much. Now we know. Thank you. Y'all look cute. That was for Commissioner Gardner. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. If I had known it was going to end up there, I don't know that I would have done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The public so. can't see this, I'm sure, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, dear. I'd like to call on Chairman King for the nominating committee. Thank you, Chairman Cook. Uh, the nominating committee has met, and we would like to present the slate of officers for uh, consideration for chairman would be Kurt Holbert, vice chair Brian McLaren, and secretary would be Angie Box. Thank you, Chairman King. I take that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second from Commissioner Swan. Any discussion from the commission? Move the nomination, cease. I have a second. Do I have to vote on that then? Right? Do I vote on the, the vote on the Suggestions to see. All in favor of the ceasing nominations, let me know by saying aye. 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 You opposed? So all in favor of the uh, officers being Chairman Commissioner Holbert, Vice Chair Commissioner McLaren, and Secretary Commissioner Box, let me know by saying aye. 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 No none are opposed? No. Congratulations. Wow. Have a great slave of officers. Thank you. I think I should say over. thank you. <laughs> um, w with that being said, um, we've got something for you. I'll, I'm going to go up here to the podium. <laughs> Not a cake. <laughs> um, Director Carter, if you want to come up here and stand, welcome to. Um, I know, I know in a minute we'll have a, a time when each of you can, can say a few words and uh, we'll do that then. But, but at this time, we want to we'll give Jeff a, a, a gavel. You can take it out and bang it when Julie doesn't act right. Uh, <laughs> when she's not focusing or you I'm can bang I'll, that. And, I'm afraid I'll get <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, just says Commissioner Jeff Cook, MD, in grateful appreciation for your service rendered as chairman of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission from March 1st, 2018 to February 28th of 2019. Um, job well done. Um, lots of accomplishments. And, uh, uh, you know, each commission, I've, I've heard from past commissioners, is each commission always has one thing that seems like it's always the big deal. Seems like we've got a big deal every year. <laughs> so I, I think uh, we tackle more problems and more issues, and, and I really do. I feel like this group and the, the group that was before us has really exceeded and done a great job. And, and I can tell you from my point, we, can, we intend to continue that over the next year and uh, make you guys proud of what you've done and continue your accomplishments. So if you'll come up, present this to you.
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought we were clapping the curtain. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, it's all good. <laughs> wow. Thank, thank you. That was very kind. Thank you. You know, I felt like my job was to kind of keep the seat warm bef between our superstars of Jamie and Kurt and just keep it out of the ditch. And so that's what I, I, I hope we at least accomplish that. And, and uh, you know, just this has been such a – We said it, I said it last night. You know, you say it's an honor and a privilege and sounds a little trite, but that's true. I got no other words other than to say it's an honor and a privilege. And it's uh, – I've learned so much from these folks. And – you know, they're all friends, and I will be friends for life. And, you know, you go through something like this, you you work on things, you, you argue, you, you know, figure it out. And, and what a you have a relationship with people through that process that is, you know, that's it's very special. So, as I said last night, I don't have the words to express how grateful I am for having this opportunity. But all I can say is thank you very much. It's been wonderful, and, and you, we have a, a great commission moving forward. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy we have that leadership in place, and it's going to be a, another great year for you all. So thank you so much to everyone. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Director Carter. I think you've got some presentations to do. Thank you, Chairman, past and present. And, uh, you know, we, we had a little get-together last night, so I won't repeat a lot of the things we said last night about commissioners and how much they mean to us. Uh, before I get into those comments, and I'll try to make them fairly quick, I, I wanted you to know, you obviously know, so Bobby is not here today. Bobby Wilson's having some little surgery on his hand and uh, wasn't able to make it here today. We've tried for years to get him to use a computer, but he maintains a pencil and paper. So at some day, when his hand heals, we'll get him back on track. But anyway, he wanted me to make sure that that you all knew that that's why he wasn't here. Otherwise, he wouldn't have missed this for anything because of the relationship he's had with, with the commissioners, again, past and present. So uh, I wanted to also mention Todd, but Don covered that earlier with the video last night. He's such a perfectionist. He literally stays midnight and after editing. He gets locked in over here sometimes, has to call people to come and get him out and those kind of things. But, but also, just for, for purpose of those people who weren't there last night and, and maybe people who, who watched the broadcast you know, after the commission meeting here, I just want to reiterate what, what commissioners mean and do. Uh, people that come on this commission, and, and it, I think four or five different governors now have said, I get more interest and spend more time on trying to figure out who to put on the Wildlife Resources Commission than sometimes I do on my own cabinet. And so there are a lot of people that have a lot of interest, and that shows when you get on the commission, there are a lot of people looking to you for a lot of leadership, and you've never let us down yet. So we, we wanted to say that. I also wanted to say we talk about the time that people invest as an agency person, weekends, nights, all those kind of things. You know, we at least get paid. <laughs> and you all do not make that's making that again for people who may not know there's no compensation to commissioners who come on here you do it out of because of what you like and it takes time away from not only from your family and and your activities that you might ordinarily be involved in but it takes away from those time that you would utilize for your business life and so we recognize that and appreciate it and that's be that's just for 10 or 11 meetings a year that doesn't count all the phone calls the extra meetings the meetings with other people that you go to so there's a big time commitment and just to say thank you for you folks that are staying and those folks that have for the last four to six years given that amount of time and that amount of energy somebody said last night i think it's commissioner swan once a commissioner always a commissioner and that's true so as you leave today, uh, you'll never not be a commissioner. You may just not be serving in that particular role. And uh, we want you to always think that you're a commissioner with the Wildlife Resources Agency and that it, it is your agency and it is your commission. So again, thank you for that. Uh, another, I'll just kind of, I wanted to read the list that I gave last night of things that have been accomplished over the last few years that while this particular group of commissioners is on, and I'll, I'll run through this quickly, and it's very just, it's only highlights of things that have happened, but you know, with the wisdom of Solomon, we sometimes talk about how do you please so many different people, and obviously there are people who aren't happy with what you say sometimes and the actions you take, and some people are ecstatic about it, and there's a huge number of people in the middle, and I know that's the people you try to work with to make the best decisions, but always put in the wildlife first. So here are some things that, that have been accomplished 
over, over the last four to six years. Y'all developed and funded the security systems for the Nashville and all the regional offices that had never been in place before. You replaced an outdated radio communication system and replaced it with a state-of-the-art system and a computer-assisted radio dispatch program. We changed to a new license vendor, as we talked about earlier, and all the things that that has generated. And it also came at a savings of over $3 million over the life of that contract over the previous vendor. So you developed the ability to tag animals and via, uh, via cell phones and internet, funded four major shooting program, excuse me, four, four shooting complexes across all three grand divisions of the state at local community level, and you, prop, you funded that with $10 million that you were able to leverage out of federal funds and others so that you didn't impact sportsmen's fund but gave programs to sportsmen across the state. You took over the operation of a new real foot spillway, replaced the one that had been in use for nearly 60 years. You modernized and replaced the heating, cooling, and lighting system in the Nashville office, which had not been changed since this building was built in 1967. So since 60 years or so that that's been in place and, and it's now up and running and what an efficiency that's made in terms of dollars and also for people who work in that, that particular building. You saw fishing success improved to maybe its highest level ever with Chickamauga being listed as one of the top three bass lakes in the country. We've seen a new state record bass, a state record trout, and another world record in the black crappie. You saw the world record non-typical buck taken, along with the number three typical in the southeast with the muzzleloader. The most permits ever given and a participation increase with our elk herd management instituted the very first ever sandhill crane hunt. You built nine new access areas and three new fishing piers saw the continued expansion of the Moment of Freedom campaign with new peers and handicapped hunting blinds. You acquired and funded and expanded the Buffalo Ridge Wildlife Management Area Shooting Complex and Education Facility. You dealt with the discovery and initial management of chronic wasting disease, put programs and funding in place to address the influx of Asian carp. And as we always talk about access and having a place to go, in addition to the million and a half acres that we managed, you added an additional 360,400 acres over this time period for people to enjoy as wildlife management areas or public hunting areas. So we just say thank you all for what you've done, and we appreciate the, the cooperation between us and, and you and all the things that you've done to make all those things happen. So uh, with that, we... I know we talked last night. We have that's Michael and Chris for you to help me sort of say bring the turkeys up, but I'm afraid several people would get up and walk this way. So, <laughs> but we have <laughs> we have we have some little mementos that we would like to present to the to the outgoing commissioners. We gave Commissioner Baker his last night because he was not able to be here today. But I just wanted to tell you a bit about these. We you know we thought about what can we give you plaques or whatever. We called our friends at the Turkey Federation. They said, I said, here's what we'd like to do. Can you help us? And they said, we have five. This turned out to be five. We have five bronze turkey statues that are out of production. Molds are gone. They're not making any more. They're five of a kind. You can't get them anywhere. I said, how about sending those to me? And they said, well, okay. So they did. And that's what this is. And on each one of them, you'll see that it has your name and years of service. And hope it's always a reminder from our agency to all of you to what you've done and how much you mean to us. And you're not only commissioners, but your friends. And I hope you'll come back and visit as often as you can. But with all of that, I would just say from behalf of the agency and all the people, the 720 people that work here, we'd like to give you a round of applause for what you've done. So with that, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Carter. Um, at, at this time, I'm just going to uh, open it up. And, uh, if anybody would like to say anything uh, to the outgoing commi commissioner. So um, go, go ahead, Commissioner Gardner. I'll start with you on that end. I just want to say uh, to, to to all of you the, that I have learned so much. You know, when you come on this commission, you really you you think you know what you're signing up for, but but until you get on the commission, um, 
you don't realize how involved it is and how much work goes into it and how much thought goes into decisions made and everything. And, and uh, y'all's experience and leadership just help, help guide. And, and uh, I feel like I'm just now getting my feet underneath me. I'm halfway through my, my four year term, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know if I should feel bad for it taking me two years to get up to speed or, or what, but uh, thank y'all very much. And uh, I've learned so much and I hope, uh, I hope I can continue at the level that y'all have uh, have uh, served the agency. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Mr. Let me let me just I'm gonna skip you guys right now, Commissioner Sanders. Well, I want to say uh, you know thanks to everybody. And Bill, I've known you for a long time through our efforts with warriors and kids and in the Chattanooga area. And and Jeff, you gave me a chance to. To, to get my feet wet in, in some leadership here, and I appreciate that. And, uh, Jamie, you've always been encouraging. I don't know why, but you always have been. And you'll appreciate, uh, right after I had found out that I was going to be nominated, I get a call from Bill Cox. He's the first call I got. He says, Watson tells me you're a good guy. I just want to find out for myself. <laughs> and, uh, Bill, you've been, you've been a – I've always appreciated – not always agreed, but always appreciated – uh, where you were coming from, and, and that always has meant more to me because I didn't have to wonder. I knew exactly where you were at, and uh, but it's been a pleasure working with all of you, and uh, and I look forward to a few more years, too. So, Thank you, Commissioner Sanders. Commissioner McLaren? I'd like to thank uh, all of the HBCs for our uh, <laughs> support that you've shown me, uh, the leadership that you've given me, and the, and the opportunity that you've uh, allowed me to uh, to grow in this position. Thank you. Commissioner Box. Okay, well, um, I agree with Commissioner Gardner about signing up. You don't really know what you're getting into, and it has been a uh, wonderful last two years. It's been, like you said, just feel like you're now getting, you know, I know everybody's name and getting your feet wet and understanding the whole process, and uh, these have been unbelievable leaders, and uh, each a very special way, and Bill Swan, you have been great, your history, and the Yukon and uh, WMA, Chuck Swan, and the great knives I've got. It's just everybody uh, individually has been very important to me. And I didn't know that I was going to, even my kids, say, you love those commissioners like family. You just talk about them all the time. And that's, uh, it's, it's true. I've really gained family and longtime friends. And, um, and my Jamie, my 72 buddy, we have a day apart in 1972. So she's always going to be my 72 buddy. And uh, I'm so grateful that... Uh, I have become friends with her, and it's been great working with her, and I appreciate your leadership as well. And um, Bill Cox, I love like a dad, or a great-grandfather, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Or uncle, I don't know, but I, I really do. And uh, they first put me over there, I said, they put me next to this big, scary Bill Cox, and I'm so scared he's gonna just eat me up over here. But uh, <laughs> I've learned so much from you, and I look up to you really like a, like a father, and I appreciate everything you do, and, you're not going to stay away because we're going to have you anytime we can get you to come join us. So thank you all for, for everything. Reverend. Thank you, sir. To the congregation, I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> My observation, Bill Swan is, is our ambassador. You know, he's got this high class, high standard, wonderful heart, and, and, is amazingly uh, involved in situations and places you wouldn't expect, but he always pulls things off, and he's a follow-through type of guy. Really admire him, Jamie. Um, I think let me, if I can say this in the right way, um, you are an inspiration to me because of the way you are as a female. Uh, if that's and it, it's, I hope that's not mean or rude or I'm saying something wrong in today's world, but it's a compliment because I, I, I admire what you've accomplished um, in a different kind of world and sometimes in a man's world, but you know what? You shined and I've known you for a long time and you've always been a huge inspiration. You are like velvet covered steel. Yeah. Jeff. Uh, <clears throat> get emotional <clears throat> with Jeff because he's my dear, dear friend. But I see him as a husband and a father. 
I've seen his family and how he raised, <clears throat> raises a son that's just truly amazing, and a, and, and a daughter, a family. He's a family man. It's awesome. And I, I just can't. Uh, I'm going to miss you here, but we'll be hunting together. Bill Cox, you're our historian. You're our uh, conscience. Uh, and um, and a, what an educator. Uh, you know more than all of us combined. And uh, we'll miss you that way, but we'll miss your big old voice and uh, your sweetheart and uh, your influence. Thank you. <laughs> let, me, let me just borrow your microphone and see if I can live up to that. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's been a blessing to, to serve with you all. Uh, we've accomplished a lot of stuff, and, and we're right in the middle of a lot of important issues that I hope that you, uh, you all will uh, uh, support us in, finishing them up. And uh, we just hope that we can live up to your all's expectations in finishing these things up. And uh, there wasn't room for two on this commission, so uh, now Bill's going off. Somebody's got to try to fill his shoes, so I'm going to step in. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be just like Bill Cox when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner King. And be last. Y'all said everything. Angie said she forgot I something. I got to come back to her. So. She's got forgot to say something. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start with Bill. Ever since I've been on the committee, I've sat beside him. In fact, the first time I came on, I was between Trey Teague and you. So I, you could either feel insignificant or empowered. I felt empowered. So because they were just encouraging and helpful, and I didn't have to ask stupid questions because Bill would ask them for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I, I, there was so many times I'd want to ask stuff, but I didn't want to take up time so I could lean over and ask him and he could fill me in really quick or write a note. And it's so helpful. Thank you. Uh, Bill Swan, I, I, when I think of you, I think you're gonna, we're going to miss your stories that you've been able to tell us, your adventures. And I don't know if y'all remember, and you correct me if I'm, no, don't correct me if I'm wrong. It, just let it ride. But we got an we got a, a email from some one of our constituents that was so derogatory, if y'all remember that. He started out by calling us all idiots. And you know, we, and I remember, and I think it was Bill Swan that replied back, sir, just so you'll know, I quit reading your email when you called us an idiot. And I thought that was so wise, because you didn't call him an idiot back. You didn't um, say anything other than, I stopped reading this when you called us all idiots. So I thought that was, I'll always remember that about you. And if somebody else did that, I'm sorry, I'm giving him credit for it. No, he, did. <laughs> he did do it. Okay. Jamie, I spent a little extra time thinking about what I want to say about you because you were, you and I were the, on the commission at the same time, only female till we got Angie, which gifted by Angie. So I, I did an acronym for your name. Is that what you call it when you do the letters for the, oh, thank you. So for Jamie, J, Jewel, you are a jewel. And I thought, uh, and I treasure your friendship, but a jewel from Proverbs 2015, uh, Ed Mitchell and Solomon. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. And I thought that you are a jewel because you speak so much knowledge and like everybody's already said, with such um, skill. So A, for I'm in all of your accomplishments, I always will be. I look forward to what else you're going to accomplish. Such a young age. My goodness, my daughter's her age. And uh, M for masterful and mindful of how you use that. Your words are always mindful. That you can, I've always said it's Irish diplomacy. She can tell a person to go to hell and make them look forward to the trip. So. <laughs> I for intelligent, but not intimidating. Uh, I love talking to you. I don't feel... You know, in comparison, I don't feel like she's judging me because she's got so much good knowledge and information and skill, And I, but I've never felt like she looked down on me. And E for encouragement and encourager. You have encouraged me. I just remember I would often say, gosh, I'm the weakest link in this chain. I just don't have anything to add. And she always was so encouraging that, um, yes, you do. So kept me going when there was times I felt like I 
y'all could find better to fill my shoes. So anyway, that's my little acronym for you. And now I get Chairman Cook. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> 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 I, no, let me tell you, you stole my thunder last night because I was so going to talk about our little side trip in Canada <laughs> with Jamie, and you, I was so going to talk about it, right? No, but you talked about our trip, you know, to, to that place in Canada. So, I, 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 so I'm not, our little side trip, remember? I don't remember. I, it started with the R. Okay, anyway, I can't remember what it was, but uh, my mind fails me sometimes. But anyway, that you stole my thunder, so all I can say is I love you. We've had fun. Good to miss you. And listen closely. <laughs> you have been a fabulous, fabulous chairman for the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Commission. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, God. Thank you. I had to gather my thoughts because I thought, oh, how am I going to talk to Chairman uh, Cook without bringing up a cake? So it took me a minute. But anyway, I, just, <laughs> I wanted to say uh, thank you for your leadership. It's been a very difficult year. You've had a lot of challenges and absolutely done a phenomenal job. And uh, I'm going to take your advice on the list and make the list I want to accomplish and stick with that. And um, I haven't laughed, laughed this hard in two years. <laughs> in my, I haven't laughed this hard in, in years, so I appreciate you being here and everything you've done so thank you all right I'm going last and they've of course said everything that needs to be said but <laughs> anyway uh, you know I, I'm gonna thank a little different group today mainly because I look out there and I see my wife and my kids and and know the sacrifice that that they give for me to be here but uh, Julie and Cindy who's on a plane uh, Vicki and to Bill Woodson Thank you for the sacrifice for, for that you've made for loaning us these four people uh, for four years, or six years, four, four of my life. Um, I know it took a lot of time. When Jeff Griggs came to me and told me how he would like me to be a commissioner, blah, 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 and how it didn't take any time, um, <laughs> one day a month, sometimes two days a month. Most of the time, just one day a month. So I... Went to Melanie, she's shaking her head yes. And I said, Melanie, you know, I, I'd like to do that. So how much time is it? I said, Jeff says, a day a month. They don't meet every month. Um, sometimes they meet two days. So anyway, um, not that that was a lie, but I don't think it was just the whole story. Um, but thank you all for your sacrifice. I remember the same phone call from Bill Cox uh, when he got my name. This is Bill Cox. <laughs> I, just, I just want you to know. That if you don't plan on being in the meetings, you don't need to take this. You need to be there at every meeting. So, Commissioner Cox. You're bloviating. <laughs> so, <laughs> Commissioner Cox, uh, I, I, I have had perfect attendance. I hope I made you proud in that. Uh, it's been a whole lot of fun cutting up with you. Uh, the friendship we have uh, can't be replaced. Um, you're going to be around, I have no doubt. But the knowledge you have, we hadn't agreed on everything, but really that is so much about the way government is supposed to work, is you're supposed to be able to disagree and then agree um, in the end. Um, I wish some folks would take a lesson from these commissioners um, in Washington that uh, there is a right way to do it, but Bill is one you can disagree with, and when you walk out of here, he's still your friend. Um, and many of you are that way. But, Bill, thank you for your service. Um, thank you for your friendship. I don't want to get too personal with any of these because I'll – the tears will start coming out. Commissioner Stroud, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk. But, Bill Swan, more Jim Shockey stories than any I've ever heard in my life. Uh, we're going to miss the pictures, the text from all the trips. Um, thank you for your commitment to this agency and what you did beforehand. You've, you've, you've been involved for a long time. Your family is a heritage probably much longer than the rest of us um, to what great heritage and you continuing it with your sons and grandkids. Um, just thank you for all you've done. Commissioner Woodson, the one that steals all my words <laughs> before I'm able to say them. Um, just the most immaculate speaker and you can express your thoughts better than anybody I know, period. Um, 
just just amazing. Um, no doubt we're not done seeing you move up to higher things, um, whatever those may be. But thank you for your friendship, your advice. She's one that will tell you straight up. Uh, and that's, that's, that's what friends are. They tell you when you're wrong, tell you when you're right, pat your back. Um, but uh, truly a great friendship. I appreciate it. Commissioner Cook, do we still get free doctor appointments? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. My kids, I mean, oh, y'all didn't, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of like Danette putting Bill Cox on hold. You know, we don't get put on hold, but Bill says, well, I call up there and I get put on hold. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't ever get put on hold. It's like, yes, Ed's here. Or, yes, well, let me pat you through to his cell phone. Or, so, anyway, so, anyway. Commissioner Cook, it's, uh, you know, I, I can remember four years ago we came on together um, and not, I don't want to sound bad, but I, I remember us having the conversation. You were like, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have the time. I, I don't know if I want to put the time into it. I don't know. It wasn't long till you were sold. It was, you were sold on it. And uh, great chairman, uh, great vice chairman, you came on and, and filled some big shoes as vice chairman. When you came on for uh, David, um, but again, I don't. I don't really have the words. I get tangled up. But anyway, just a great job. I appreciate your friendship. You're one of the funniest people I've ever been around in my life. Um, just a great joy. You make us all laugh. Um, CWD. I, I just want to bring that out. That was your big concern. We wanted to keep it out. We did everything we could. Uh, you especially led that charge. Um, now it was here, and you got to lead in the charge and the response. And what a great job you've done, and uh, just appreciate you. So, Chad Baker is not here. Um, I, I just want to say something about him, but he is uh, – Chad's video last night was, was touching. He's, it's really amazing um, how Chad's changed over the years, and – just uh, Chad's a great guy. You will not change his mind. If he comes in, he's going to speak his piece. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But Chad would also, when he left, he would be your friend. Um, but Chad, we appreciate what you've done. And you have uh, definitely helped this commission in many different ways, whether it be deer management, elk management, uh, fisheries. But uh, a lot of accomplishments have your name attached to it. And thank you for what you've done as well. So with that being said, I'm going to let Commissioner Swan, if he's got any parting words. Connie, you said a mouthful when uh, you said that you were thinking about asking a question. All of a sudden, Bill Cox asked the same question. Many times I'd have my pencil up to ask a question, and Bill would ask it, and I'd have to put it down. It seemed like they always looked towards Bill anytime there was a... Anybody want to ask a question? They'd look at Cox, and Cox would always go first. But um, um, you said uh, you said that two years, you finally feel like you're getting up to speed. Four years, you still feel like you're getting up to speed. I've got to add a, a couple of, of things here real quick. Back on my second commission meeting was at Paris Landing. And a bunch of us went to this place, I'll call it a honky-tonk. And we'd had a couple of adult beverages, and so nobody wanted to drive back. Well, I think, Kurt, was it you? Somebody knew the sheriff. I actually wasn't there, so. Oh, okay. Somebody knew <laughs> the sheriff. I get to say that. Great. And so the sheriff comes in an SUV to carry us all back to the hotel. And we're all getting out, and the sheriff starts to drive out drive off, and from the very back, under the hatchback, Jeff McBillan's hollering, hey, wait. <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, one thing that uh, uh, sticks in my mind. My two favorite meetings were Lone Oak and Bill Cox's house. Uh, those were times that we were together, you know, and had a chance to interact with each other on, you know, outside the meeting, and those were really fun. Um, I can't say enough for the four years I had. It seems like it was, like I said yesterday uh, or last night, Jeff and I were going through confirmation at the same time, 
And I mean, it really does seem like yesterday, doesn't it, Jeff? Um, but thanks so much. It's been an honor. Um, thank you. Commissioner Woodson, I did forget to say I'm going to miss your questions on the Wildlife Committee. Whew. After yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, um, Mr. Chairman. And I, you've been very kind about my ability to string a sentence together, and it's uh, a little harder today. So I will not go down that road. Um, a couple of things I just want to reflect on. Like so many of us, we think we know a lot about the mission of the agency, the yes and its implications when we say, yes, we'll serve on this body. We think we know what the men and women of the agency do. I mean, this is my 21st year. I've spent so much time, you know, learning from the agency in different roles that I've had, sponsoring their legislation in the General Assembly, working really closely with them. And what I learned six years ago immediately was another reminder in life, which happens frequently, of how little I really knew about the seen and unseen work of this important body. Um, the, the stories that I have experienced of just the humanity of reaching out beyond the scope of this mission in times of challenge, um, like when our friends in Gatlinburg suffered such tragedies. There's never a, well, let me get the details before I'll act. It's, I'll be there, I'll be helpful. We'll work out the bureaucratic stuff later. And I just respect that so much. And of course, there's just the work of it, game and non-game species and so many different things. And so I've learned every minute I've been on this commission and it's been a privilege and know that I've got still much to learn. Um, I've, I just, to each of you, you're all leaders. I love leadership. I love servant leadership. The state's in great hands. The state's in great hands. And I'll just say one last thing about the new leadership team and the commissioners who will continue uh, forward and leading. It's going to be a really important time. There's a lot of transition in our state. Um, we have a fantastic new governor. We have the most historic turnover in the legislature that we've ever had in the history of our state since Reconstruction. Um, we've got, as we've experienced in the last few days and really the last six years, a ton of retirements from folks who've served this agency for decades and decades. And so I think that you all will have your hands very full of important decisions from a leadership perspective, not only on the complex stuff like CWD and I mean, all the complicated issues that come before you and important constituent issues that you'll have to deal with. But this is going to be a window of time that's just going to be make or break. And I have total confidence in this leadership team and each one of you. I think it's going to be a really exciting time. And, you know, I know that uh, Laney and Jackson are here. It's been so fun to watch Kurt evolve as a leader. You're going to be great. And... Um, one of my favorite books to give young people when they graduate from a big moment is, Oh, the places you'll go. I can't wait to see. So thank you all. Bill, I'll be last. You go. <laughs> I'm still chairman, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I was doing pretty well until um, you. <clears throat> you know, um, everybody up here gets emotional and cries like a baby, but it's and it's half about these people, <clears throat> but the rest is about y'all. And um, and what you do and what you mean. <clears throat> Dead gum. Thank you.
Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> um, you know, we, 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 I'm going to miss everybody, you know, swans talking and bragging about Shockey and, and the eloquence of Jamie and, and you know, it, it, it's, all, it's all fabulous. And James Stroud is a famous record producer that, that probably ought to be in Alaska right now doing something fun. <laughs> Um, Kent Woods acts like he couldn't he couldn't put two straws together and add them up, and I know better. <laughs> Smartest guy around here, and how sweet Connie is and fishing, and I fished with her all day in Louisiana, and she's just a you know star in your crown for you married to dirt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's great, but. You know, it's rare that you're around, that I'm around anyway, a group of people in this agency that very rarely uh, I see that when they decide they want to do something, it's not perfect. It just is. Everything they do is first class, and it might take them a while, but it's, it's and I've been around, and not that I've, that, that, I'm not nearly as smart as I as you guys are giving me credit for, and I appreciate the compliments. I really do. But I've been around several states and talking to the, some of these meetings and all that stuff, and I can tell you right now that that there are states that that do single things better than Tennessee, but nobody is as good as Tennessee is as a, as an agency. Nobody, and we appreciate it so much. Um, it was an honor to be here. Uh, I think. Kurt has got a um, an aggressive agenda. Uh, I would challenge this commission that moves forward to support that. I would challenge this agency to do what you do and be perfect. And 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 my only regret, um, or my biggest regret, is that 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 I was not able to to help the agency get a get a permanent funding source other than licenses. We all know that needs to be done, and I'm hoping that you guys will be aggressive and bold and have the courage, and 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 hopefully that will get done soon, whatever that might look like. Um, I'm going to miss you, and I really appreciate it. And uh, I've got, you know, I told you earlier, I had uh, Mr. Mr. Clift, Robert Clift has got, uh, was such a fine man, and not that I'm trying to be melodramatic in the end, but he's he's got a poem that he he recites by memory, and and I printed it, and I'd like to read it if I can if I can get through this, <clears throat> just to just leave you something to to think about. It's called "The Touch of the Master's Hand." Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. But held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar, then two. Only two? Two dollars? Or who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going three. But no, from the room, far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as caroling angel sings. The music ceased in the auctioneer with a voice quiet and low. Said, what am I bid for the old violin? And held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars, who will make it two? Two thousand, and who will make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going, going, gone. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we do not quite understand what changed its worth. Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with the life out of tune, <clears throat> battered and scarred with sin, <clears throat> is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, and a game, and he travels on. He's going once, going twice. He's going almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. I thought that's pretty special.
Thank you, Bill. I, 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 yeah, I, I would. I think all of us would love to have a copy of that. So, if we've your your new project. If you please get us a copy of that, I'd greatly appreciate it. So, and I know we've been here a long time. I just want to say thank you to each individual. And Dennis, start with you. I mean, I'm, I'm always impressed at how deep you go with, we talk about something and you'll pick up some nuance issue and have a very specific intelligent question to that. So keep that up, you, you, you dig really deep. Bill, a lot of, and a lot of the stuff I wanna say has already been said, because, but that's what happened to me go last, I guess. But Bill, the funny story about the, the guy calling us an idiot, I wanted to bring that up as well because, you know, Again, not like I said about it, Ed. It's not that you're old. It's just that you're wise, and and you have all this experience and all the uh, your hunting experiences is, is unbelievable. I mean, I don't know any person that's hunted as much as you, and and and, and you can draw from that. And and I, I really enjoyed and appreciate that, Tony. You you are the perfect guy. I mean, what what else do we have for a budget chair? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And you do the same. You dig into the budget, which is such an important part of what we do it's a hugely important part and you are the perfect guy for that and and, and i mean, really enjoyed working with you as well and jamie some i think tony said you're you're an encourager and absolutely as you know when we talked about me being chairman i said this is not my thing i hate public speaking i i and, and here i am rambling on now so let's see what's happened in two years but bloviating even <laughs> yeah yeah so I'm, yeah, I'm bloviating and Aunt Jamie was so encouraging. Said, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. And then for the first, for the first few meetings, she every break she's you're doing great. You're doing great. I'm I'm, I'm trying. How much? You know, you're doing great. You're doing great. And the other side of it is, I could always sense too when I wasn't doing great. I might be looking here and saying something, but I could just sense that I'm not doing something right. And I look, <laughs> and Jamie would go, "You need to do this or that." So, thank you for seeing that in me. Because, as I mentioned, that was something I struggled with, and I, I don't anymore. So, you know, <clears throat> I guess I do struggle with it. <laughs> um, um, you know, that's a, I'm almost 58 years old, and to have your encouragement to make that change is special. So, thank you. <clears throat> Brian? <laughs> uh, you, you were like me from the start. You, you, you don't say a whole lot, but you're thinking. And, you know, the old, the old thing, too, you learn more by listening instead of talking. And you've learned a lot. I watch, I watch how you take notes. And you, you, you're learning a lot. And now it's your time to start talking. And, and you will. And, and uh, you'll be great at it. And, Kirk, you're, you are the perfect chairman. You're, you've, all your experiences of the hunting and fishing and, and a businessman and a farmer and, and politically involved and, and your personality, you, you've been a huge encouragement and, and, and you're going to be wonderful. And, and as everybody, I count you all as friends, but we've, we've been in the trenches quite a bit and figured some things out, so I really appreciate that. Angie, the, the same. You, I'm so impressed with with all of us, like you're drinking from a fire hose, you know, and at first it's like, where am I? Uh, make it to, let's vote, you know, we kid you about the kid you about the procedure things and all, but in the last year, I've noticed just your responses to emails and how you, how you also dig in and you'll go, is it a problem? You go visit, you know, you go talk to somebody and you get it figured out. So keep that up. You're going to be a great chairman also. James and I go way back. So, so, well, actually, ten years. It seems like it's way back. But we've we've been really close friends for for ten years, and and uh, I love you. That's all that said. <laughs> and I, I agree with the uh, with Kent. Uh, Kent's the all shucks. No, I uses. I don't know that. It, you don't. You never fool me from the start. I, I know exactly what you're up to, and uh, and and he, he's uh, he's one of those guys. 
I've said before too, I say I love to be underestimated. I love when people think, I don't, you know, that you, you, you like that too. So <laughs> keep, keep it up. <laughs> Connie, Julie is okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> you're, we've talked about it and it's okay. So you're my commission wife and just because, just because I'm not on the commission anymore doesn't mean we, we have to part. We have to part. <laughs> Well, yeah. So, it's it, you're wonderful. I can't. You're, you're wonderful. You know that. I love you. And Bill, we've I've joked about this before. It started with the uh, with the first meeting we had in Dayton, where I was wildlife chair. Uh, you, you, we kind of started then, and we've been back and forth, and and I've, I appreciate it so much. You've challenged me. You've a lot of times presented the other side, and. Me and you, would, through the years, we've just grown closer, and I really appreciate your friendship, and I really appreciate your, you, you oftentimes being the counter to, to, you know, I'm thinking this, you're going, well, no, I'll think about this. And so it's great having your opinion. And most of the time we come to the same conclusion, and you always would tell me, but you're the chair. And I'd say, yeah, but I'm not the king, so we got to work this through. And, and, again, like everybody said, I appreciate so much your your you're given your opinion so strongly and I'll say the same about Chad uh, I meant to start with Chad and I forgot but uh, uh, Chad was great he lets you know what his what was his opinion and he and he, he did some great things he had a lot to do with the elk uh, the, uh, some heavy equipment that we purchased he did some great things and and so I meant to mention that from the first but I can't beat what Bill said about it's half commission it's half um, uh, y'all and I I, I'm not even going to try to compete with what he said. Please know that that is true. We're, you know, we we, we so respect y'all and what you do, and and so appreciate what you do for our state. And uh, it's just been great to have been a small part of it. So, does anybody have anything else to say? So, grandfather, Bill. Seriously? <laughs> no, I said great grandfather. Bill, you're the. <laughs> Bill, you're the most tenured commissioner here, so I think it's only appropriate if you would like to make a motion for adjournment. Move we adjourn. So moved.